We're live. I believe we're live. I don't see any come up. Oh, there they go. I don't know I'm live until uh, I click it and then I start seeing uh, the, the comments pop up. So tick tock time to rock. Ladies and gentlemen, I am your friendly neighborhood philosopher D Wood. And with me now is the Assyrian encyclopedia himself, Triple B. Actually, you're like only one B now, man. Well, I still got love handles. Don't worry. I'm getting there, though. You're one B, dude. Just bald. Because you're because because <laughs> you were never beautiful. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, we got to be honest. We're Christians. Um, <laughs> yep. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I I'm guessing uh, many of you saw the challenge that went out on Tuesday. The challenge went out on Tuesday. Um, Sam, have you have you heard this request from? fans of people like Zucker Nike over the years uh, give us one unequivocal verse where Jesus Christ peace be upon him says I am God or worship me you heard that you heard that uh... that's a new argument David mm -hmm. this is the first time in my apologetic career I've heard that argument not I've heard it since the days of Ahmad Idan in the 90s dude yeah so yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's this demand for an unequivocal verse. And uh, as you may have noticed over the years, Islam seems to thrive on double standards. Right. Are you familiar yeah. with this? Them using completely different standards? How dare you attack the true religion that preaches consistency and honesty and integrity? <laughs> what's wrong with you, man? Yeah, I don't know what's up with you today. Hey, it looks like Shh. looks like we have uh, looks like we have uh, uh, plenty of uh, plenty of fans in the chat. We got uh, uh, Momo says, uh, David Wood, did you know that you are the Abu Jahl of our times? Thank you. That's, that's quite, a compliment. That's quite a compliment. Um, yep. Abdur Rahman Ibrahim says, weak challenge. Now notice, Sam, we were talking about the challenge of DDOT and Zakir Naik. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> talking about yeah. their challenge. And uh, uh, Abdur Rahman says, weak challenge. We agree, it is a weak challenge. Um, and the, the main weakness is that it's based on inconsistency, right? You guys will tell us uh, to find something in the Bible, and we can find all kinds of passages that show that we're right, but then you'll become extreme skeptics and say, nope, I want something that's, that's unequivocal, that I cannot reinterpret, knowing that you can reinterpret anything that anyone says. But then we turn to your religion, and Sam, uh, I was talking about this with, with, uh, with Hatun the other day. It, mm. it seems that that many Muslims just they look at the evidence and they conclude the exact opposite. So, so what we were talking about in that and in, in that show was, we can take we can go through their sources and we can show them from Sahih Muslim where Abu Musa says that two entire chapters of the Quran were forgotten. We can show that according to Aisha, um, over a hundred verses were lost from Surah 33. We can go down the line showing these things, and the conclusion of Muslims will be perfect preservation right down to the letter, which is the last thing anyone would ever conclude by reading about all of these passages, verses, entire chapters coming up missing. No one would ever conclude that, but that's what they conclude. And then we go to the Quran, which endlessly affirms the inspiration, preservation, and authority of our Christian scriptures. And Muslims look at it and say, oh, it's, it's affirming corruption of their text. Right? It's like whatever the evidence shows, they believe the exact opposite. Yeah. You familiar yeah. with this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, of course. In fact, I remember the classic debate. You were there where our dear brother, who's now in the presence of Jesus, Nabil Qureshi, debated Bassam Zawadi on the issue of the preservation of the Quran. And didn't Bassam Zawadi concede to pretty much everything Nabil said? But his argument was it was designed by Allah to be this way. Yeah. So mm -hmm. these missing surahs, because Allah didn't want them to be part of the Quran. And that's what we mean that the Quran is perfectly preserved because all those extra parts that Allah didn't want, he made sure they disappeared. Yeah, and so the, the, the idea of that approach is, you know, you can acknowledge, you can acknowledge um, all of the differences that you find and just explain them as the will of Allah, right? So you can say, oh, yep, those two chapters... I think he ex I think he tried to argue that it's a hadith or something like that that actually came up missing, even though in the text it refers to chapters of chapters of the Quran. There, he's talking to the the Quran yeah. reciters. Um, but uh, yeah, as far as the the differences in the text, the differences in the manuscripts, you can say yes, they're there. You can acknowledge them, but just say yeah, but it's all the will of God. God wanted all those differences, and and so if you really wanted to be honest with the evidence, but still maintain perfect preservation, you'd have to say. Uh, yeah, entire chapters of the Quran came up missing. Yes, large passages, 
came up missing. Yes, verses were eaten by a sheep, but yeah. Allah was behind it all. Allah sent that sheep to eat those verses. Allah, Allah sent his miracle sheep to eat those verses of the Quran so that they're not in here. It wasn't the wives conspiring. It was, uh, it was her sheep just randomly ate those verses that Muhammad's wives really, really hated. Because you don't believe in Qadr. You're, you are an Armenian. Qadr, Allah has predestined everything. He created that sheep to exist at that time. And he moved that sheep by a jinn or maybe an angel, I don't know, to find that single copy that had the only, <clears throat> the only copy that had the verses of stoning and breastfeeding and made sure that he devoured it. That's why the sheep is exalted above the seven heavens. He's mm. with Allah because he did something majestic because had that copy survived, the Quran would not have been perfect, David. Yep. Wouldn't have been, per wouldn't have been perfect. <laughs> All right, Sam, well, uh, uh, I, got a, I got a comment here from uh, Punisher Lee. Punisher Lee way, says, what's up? Just before you say that, you got two fans that want to say hi to you. Guys, my two daughters are listening. My Sarai and Zipporah, and they are big fans of David Wood. So I just want to say to my daughters, we love you. God mm -hmm. bless you. So I just want mm -hmm. you to say that. Go Amen. ahead. Um, Punisher Lee says, Act 17 Apologetics, someone has made a reply to your video. 48 minutes. I'll watch it after this stream. Uh, yes, there are actually multiple responses. And we were just going to go live tonight on this issue and go through the responses. But since, uh, since Muslim apologists and Muslim YouTubers really jumped at the challenge... Um, I mean, really, when you when when they jump out and start making video responses that quickly, it seems seems to me, Sam, we might have touched a nerve here. Mm -hmm. I think we touched a nerve by pointing definitely. out. Definitely, definitely, yeah. yep. And, and I and, think they realize that. Why, why, David? Because if if it if you not only show their inconsistency the way they argue, but if they fail to show that the Quran teaches the corruption of the Bible, then Muhammad is exposed as a false prophet. Because that's one of the main arguments Muhammad sets forth in the Quran that. He's a prophet because he confirms the scriptures in the hands of the Jews and Christians. So that's how we know he's a prophet. But that means if he contradicts those scriptures, he's a fraud. So they know this is the the meat of the matter. Mm -hmm. This is it. And it's it's basically Muslims, all of these guys, all of these Muslim apologists, they know that the Quran contradicts our Christian scriptures on fundamental doctrines like Jesus' death, his uh, his death for, for the sins of others, his resurrection from the dead, his divine nature. Um, they know that the Quran contradicts their, I mean, that, that their con the Quran contradicts our book. And so they know that, but that notice that's one part of the Islamic dilemma, right? The, uh, the, their book contradicts our book. Yeah. Part two of the Islamic dilemma is that their book affirms our book, right? And so they understand how much rests on this, that if we can show that the Quran actually affirms the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of the Christian scriptures, then Islam self-destructs. They know this, but they also know, they also know that the Quran nowhere suggests or even hints at the corruption of the text of the gospel. The Quran affirms it. The Quran says we have it. The Quran commands us to judge by it. The Quran says we have no ground unless we we have no ground to stand upon unless we stand upon it. This is all talking about the gospel. Not one word suggesting that the gospel has been corrupted. They know that, but they also know that the Muslim population as a whole doesn't know that. They know that yes. the Muslim population as a whole is in a state of ignorance, and the Muslim population as a whole thinks that the Quran affirms the corruption of our text so that's why we're here right amen by the grace of god may jesus christ use us imperfect sinners and the power of the holy spirit and purify us in the blood of the lamb the lord jesus be glorified lord by the power of your spirit in jesus name let's do it man all Bring right so all. so uh yeah people uh punisher lee and others are pointing out that people have started posting video responses well guess what we're gonna go through them um the first one the first video response i saw that was sent to me by muslims <laughs> Yeah. This, this is a yeah. this is amazing, Sam. Um, yeah, this one was really bad. This this it's hilarious because um, have you have you noticed this that l many Muslims have a different idea of what a refutation is? <laughs> like yeah. I, we, you know, we think of a refutation as okay, here's here's my argument to refute it. You would have to show that something in my premises are false or that the conclusion doesn't follow from the premises or something like that. That you'd have to show something like that. Whereas. For many Muslims, it's as long as you say words in response to whatever the argument is, and you say it in an excited fashion and talk down to people, 
that's a refutation. It doesn't matter if you, if you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> from, that's the mindset. Man. Yeah. From their perspective, you can even agree with me as long as you pretend to refute me, <laughs> then that, that's good enough. Um, all right. Well, so everyone, we are, uh, since lots of Muslims are posting video responses, we decided we're actually going to take a couple of days on this, uh, on this issue. And matter of fact, we're going to take as long as Muslims want to go. As yep. long as Muslims want to keep raising objections, we're going to respond. So the first one I saw that was sent to me by Muslims was from Mufassal Islam. Uh, and people were saying, aha, Mufassal Islam refuted you, which is amazing because when I watched it, he actually agreed with, he agreed with what I said in my video. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, uh, boy. Yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and that's what we're going to do now. And then tomorrow we're going to be live again, eight o'clock. Uh, and we're going to, then we'll, then we'll, then we'll go through another video response and we'll keep going through them as long as there are Muslims who want to respond. All right. Shameless Shamoon. Are you ready? Shameless. Let's do it. Now you're listening through Skype. So if you want to turn your, your audio yeah. on, then you can actually hear this clip as yes, I play I it. All right. Is everyone, uh, is everyone ready? Um, everyone ready over here? Um, yeah. So guys for, so the, the general plan here is we're going to go through, Mufassal Islam's entire video, his entire video, uh, minus the part where it was just clips of me. Um, but we're going to go through his entire video and we'll, we'll address anything and we'll see if he has met the challenge at all in any way. And if he hasn't, then, then, then wow. Um, all right. So everyone ready? You ready, Sam? Yeah, I'm ready, my brother. Come on now. All right. School here. me, son. School me. We got to uh, we got to check out Mufassal Islam here. Sure. Just scrolling for the uh, for the clips and and get to number one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. So this is how Mufassal's response begins. Surah five, verse forty six. Well, I agree with you, David. There, that both of us believe that God gave jesus the gospel for guidance so you must preserve it now have you done it have you added anything extra to it which was not in the bible that's the question david right if you add something extra to it then you corrupt your religion because to a Muslim's understanding, the religion is what the scripture says. All right. Now, I know Sam's hearing it on a little delay. So, yeah. Sam, you can always uh, listen a little longer and ignore me when I start talking again. But uh, yeah, yeah. Right. notice what he said there. He said, the question is, have you added anything to it? That is not the question. The question is whether Allah says that the gospel has been corrupted. That's the question. That's the question I raised. Where, how, y y like, <laughs> it's just amazing. <laughs> I don't yeah. know how they can't get this, right? Guys, yeah. we know you Muslims believe that our scriptures have been corrupted. We know you believe that. You believe that because our scriptures contradict your scriptures. And you know that your God affirms the inspiration of our scriptures. So if your God affirms the inspiration of our scriptures, but our scriptures don't line up, you have to say corrupted. So we know you want to say something's been added. So you want to say, ha ha, the question is, something is, has something been added to them? That's not the question. The question is, does your God and your prophet in the seventh century affirm the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of our scriptures? That's one. And two, does he anywhere say that our scriptures have been corrupted, that the gospel has been corrupted, that we we shouldn't judge by the gospel, that we, we, we shouldn't stand upon the gospel. Does he say that anywhere? And it's a simple question, right? It's a simple question. If you say yes, as all Muslims want to, then you should be, you should very easily be able to show us in your text, right here is where he says, the gospel has been corrupted. He says it right here. You see everyone, chapter such and such, verse so and so, the gospel has been corrupted. Don't trust it. That's why you need the Quran, because the gospel has been corrupted. Uh, what are your thoughts on this so far? Yeah, the, help me understand, and obviously I'm being sarcastic here, but the challenge you posed was in response to their challenge, 
show us an unequivocal statement where Jesus says, I am God, or worship me in those exact words. And so the challenge was, show us where the Quran comes out, black and white, and says, the gospel, the Bible, whatever is corrupt. So then how do these Muslims not see their inconsistency? If they're going to allow, and I want the people to understand, if they're going to allow for the Quran to imply the corruption of the Bible and not say it unequivocally, mm -hmm. then now they bury themselves further because that means they're going to have to discard the argument that Jesus has to say something explicitly for it to be true because using their own method, Jesus can imply he's God without having to say it in that exact manner. So they didn't understand your challenge? Is that what it is? Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, because... It, yeah, it would seem it would seem pretty straightforward, right? Here, here yeah. is here is the standard you guys are using, right? You got all of these claims by Jesus, which the people around him at the time heard, and they said this guy is blaspheming, yeah. right? That that was the essence of his Jewish of his trial before the Jewish leaders was you've heard this blasphemy, what this what this guy's saying, right? Yeah. And it, by the way, a little side note, Sam, we've got all these passages where Jesus is saying things that he shouldn't be saying if he's just a Muslim prophet. 100%. And people like Zakir Naik want to say, aha, but what did he say that, that's that's unequivocal, that, that I can't reinterpret? Well, guess what? If he's really a Muslim prophet obsessed with Tawheed, he shouldn't be saying anything that could even remotely be interpreted as him being divine, right? 100%. There should, right be, nothing, the there should be nothing there that even sounds like he's claiming to be the final judge, which he does. There should yeah. be nothing there which sounds like he's claiming to be the divine son of God, which he does. There should be nothing there that even sounds like he's the one who's going to raise the dead at the resu at the resurrection before the final judgment. There should be nothing like that, and yet it's all over the place. And so, if their view were correct, we shouldn't expect to find any of these things that Jesus says. Um, we shouldn't expect him to go around just saying, "Guys, I'm just a prophet. I'm just a prophet." You know, Muhammad's coming after me. I'm just a prophet. That's not what we find at all. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, you're right. They came up with the standard. Show us something. Show, give us an unequivocal statement. Okay, well, that's that's the standard you guys are laying down. Now, if the Islamic dilemma, what we call the Islamic dilemma, which is basically your scripture affirms our scriptures, and yet our scriptures contradict your scriptures, so your religion self-destructs. That's what happens when you affirm scriptures that contradict your religion. You're affirming as the word of God scriptures that contradict your scriptures and say that your scriptures are false. Your religion just self-destructs as soon as you do that. We point that out. And every Muslim wants to say, nope, the Quran affirms the the corruption of the gospel. And so, okay, okay, <laughs> just show us where. Chapter yeah. and verse, chapter and verse. Yeah. Um, and Mufasil, <clears throat> Mufasil Islam here, Mufasil Islam is the first to respond. Muslims told me, Muslims sent this video to me and said, aha, you've been refuted. And as far as I can tell, Sam, he actually agrees with me. 100%. And what's ironic about Mufasil? He left Islam, became an atheist for a while, and returned to Islam, and he's using the same fallacious arguments that he himself attacked and condemned when he left Islam. I don't know if it's now a case of being doubly blind now, because his videos against Islam were excellent in discrediting it. Now he's arguing in the same fallacious manner that he himself decried when he was an enemy of Allah and his messenger during his stint as an atheist. So again, it's not about truth with them, and there has to be something deeper it has to be something spiritual that would lead a man to attack the very arguments that he saw as fallacious and then embrace the same form of argumentation that he himself refuted there's mm -hmm. something deeper there it has to be something spiritual but yeah if, i hope he gets better i hope you're going to give me some better i don't know yeah uh jun kim here says uh i hope david and sam bring mm -hmm. out the verses bring out those verses about the angel uh yes we will we're happy to we'll, we'll we'll give those out but we uh we definitely wanted to take the first part of this program to again the structure right here is we are going to go through this entire video it's not that long it was like uh it was like nine minutes long and then like two minutes of that were clips of me so it's like i guess around seven or eight minutes somewhere in there um yeah. and so we're actually going to watch all the clips uh, see if he has been able to meet the challenge. And then uh, after that, we'll just take questions from the chat. So all of you Muslims who are here, we know you have yeah. a, there are a lot of you here. Um, get your get your, your verses ready. It should be easy, yeah. chapter and verse. All you have to do, here's a, here's a verse, and it's talking about the gospel, and it says the text has been corrupted, and you shouldn't trust the text. You shouldn't judge by the text. Show us those. Get those ready. 
be searching for those. Um, all right, Sam, I actually have a uh, short clip and then I have a little compilation here. So if you want to turn on your sure. uh, turn on your volume, I got it. Um, going back to Mufasal Islam. So uh, I forgot to put a link to Mufasal's entire video in here. Well, I, I guess I don't need to since we're watching the entire thing. All right, let's watch. Uh, let's watch this clip real quick. Okay, David, I will Google it. Hmm, you are right. None of these verses refer directly to the gospel. Uh, did, did everyone uh, did everyone catch that? Uh, Sam, the only thing I played again. Uh, everyone, if you're if you're yeah. if you're wondering why I'll be talking to Sam, uh, Sam, yeah, because there's a delay. The video didn't even come out yet. Yeah, on me, on my part. yeah. So Sam can't hear the video clips I'm playing for you through Skype. Oh, okay. So um, if he wants to hear them, they'll they'll be on a delay. Yeah, that but part it, I heard. Yep. That's the part I heard. Yeah. But everyone, did you catch what Mufasal said? Because in my video, I said, "All right, just just go ahead and just go ahead and Google, and you can find all the 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 verses that are supposedly about the corruption of the scriptures, that are supposedly about corruption of scriptures, and find what just make sure it's talking about the gospel, and make sure it refers to the corruption of the text." And he actually said, he actually said, "You're right, David. None of these verses directly talk about the gospel." And if that was not clear, if that, in case that was not clear, let's take a listen one more time where I've, uh, I've drawn a little attention to that, but listen to what he says here. Hmm. You are right. 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 None of these verses refer directly to the gospel. None of these verses refer directly to the gospel. None of these verses refer directly to the gospel. You are right. You are right. You are right. So, Muslims who sent me this video <laughs> saying that it refutes you. What does he say? What does Mufasal say in the video that you sent me? to show me that I'm wrong for challenging you to produce a single unequivocal statement from Allah in the Quran claiming that the gospel has been corrupted. The video you Muslims sent me has Mufasal Islam saying you're right. No, people are asking if he's stuck on repeat. No, I, I put it on repeat. <laughs> I put those clips on repeat so you could hear yeah. him saying, one, that I'm right, and two, what is that noise in the background, Sam? Is there a fan going on or something? Oh, yeah, yeah, I can turn it off. If it's well, okay. I can turn it off. It's pretty loud. Okay, let me get it off. Um, hey, so Anthony! Turn off the air condition! <laughs> Someone said sounds like a space program. <laughs> um, so, 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 uh, in the video that Muslims sent me, Mufasal Islam says, he says it differently. He doesn't say unequivocal. He says, true. None of these verses, you can get up if you need to real quick, Sam. Yeah, good. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just turn off from there. Go ahead, he brother. says, Sorry. Sorry about that. he says, none of these verses that supposedly refer to corruption of text, none of these verses directly mentions the gospel. So guess what? Mm -hmm. If none of them actually mention the gospel, then Sam, that sounds to me like I'm right, right? I mean, if, if, 100% if, if they, on the money, dude. If I so if I say there's nothing there that 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 unequivocally says that the gospel has been corrupted, and you come back and say, well, true, there's nothing there. There's there's nothing that directly refers to the gospel. Yeah. I, well, I, I don't. I mean, that's the end of it, right? That's the end yeah, of it. Yeah, that's right. You, the challenge that you set forth was show us unequivocally. He just admit. I want people to get this. Understand what you heard. He admit. None of those passages that talk about corruption refer to the gospel. Therefore, he admits the challenge cannot be met if we apply their own criterion against them. So they fail. That's it. Game over. But I guess it's not game over. Okay. No. Still so gonna try desperately. <laughs> no. So so, what he's going to what he's going to go on to do after admitting that my entire video was correct and that yes I'm right there is no statement of Allah where he affirms the where, where he affirms unequivocally the corruption of our of our of our gospel um he's going to go on to argue 
indirectly the Quran does because Allah says, and this is just an amazing argument. He's going to say that the Quran, the Quran says don't go to excess in your religion. And when it says go to don't go to excess, it's saying that if you go to excess, then your, your scriptures have been corrupted. So he's going to actually make that argument. Hmm. Uh, I've, I've, uh, I've watched it and I put the video clips together. I still do not grasp it. I mean, at the end of the day, what he's really saying is your scriptures contradict the Quran. 100%. We know that. We agree. <laughs> amen. Amen. Yeah. We, do not, we do not want to line up with the Quran. So amen that our, our scriptures contradict the Quran. Um, but yeah, notice he's, he's basically agreeing. Yep, David is right. But let me try to argue that your scriptures have been corrupted anyway. All right, Sam, you want to add anything? Yeah, what what you were about to hear, it is shocking because it's going to backfire against him, and it's going to actually show the Quran is contradictory and that Muhammad aped the theology of the Gospel of John. So that's what I'm, I was waiting for this particular clip that you're about to show when he talks about, you know, I'll let you play it. So then, But I want people to understand, listen to the next clip, pay attention. The clip he's going to comment on, is going to show the Quran contradicts itself regarding the person of Jesus and his work, and Muhammad apes the theology of the Gospel of John, the very Gospel that the Muslims are telling us is the least reliable because it's later and more theologically developed, and yet Muhammad derived his Christology, his understanding of Christ, from the theology of John. We're going to have a field day with this guy. Mm -hmm. gonna, uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, really, it's... Uh, I, I mean, it's... Really, it's sad because it shows the the impact that that Islam has on people. That his viewers would actually look at this. <laughs> Sam, you know you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of a uh, remember Muhammad hijab, where I said, "Hey, according to the Quran, Allah prays for Muhammad." Uh, so I said, "I'm going to give you a free Arabic lesson. <laughs> it's not Salah to Muhammad. It's for <laughs> yeah. kafir." <laughs> yeah. So uh, and he likes it means God with us. Shame yeah, on you. But it, it, it reminds me, it, it's it's the exact same thing where his conclusion was to agree with exactly what I said. I said Allah prays for Muhammad. He claimed that I said Allah prays to Muhammad. Never said that. I've never thought that. And then he tries to correct me and he's, he's, he says that he's refuting me. And he says, aha, what it actually says is that Allah prays for Muhammad. And the, the crowd cheers that he's refuted me when all he did was say exactly what I said. The reason I said that reminds me of this is here you have Mufassal Islam. He's refuting me. And he starts off by saying, yes, you're correct. None of these are fur to the gospel. <laughs> what, is, what in the world is this, man? They can, and so what I'm talking about with what Islam does to people's minds, these guys could say literally anything. They could agree with every word we say, but as long as they're they're sounding like they're refuting us, Muslims say, aha, aha, what a great, what a brilliant refutation that agreed completely with Take you. Take me! Take me! This is this is amazing stuff. All right. Well, I, I think we should go pretty because guys, I can't I can't actually detect really an argument except Mufassal Islam saying, but since you're since you're since your religion contradicts Islam, then somehow you must have corrupted it or something like that. While missing the entire point, nowhere does your Quran say that our, our scriptures have been corrupted. All right. So let's just go ahead and uh, we'll go through these pretty quick. If you want to listen to the clips, um, I can comment real quick. You can comment real quick, and then we can just go on to the next clip, and that way we can eventually get to uh, we can eventually get to comments in the chat. Um, all right, so here we go. Clip number four. Hmm. But David, I have surprise for you, David. Surprise. Let's check very carefully the several meanings of the words on the screen. All right, uh, pretty groundbreaking there. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, um, he said, let's check the meaning of the words on the screen. And, and the words he was looking at were uh, religion and excess. And so he said he's got something. Uh, he's, he's really got me. He's got something. He's got something special for me there. Surprise, David. And Surprise. then his he looked at the meanings of the words excess and 
religion. There's no real commentary needed for that because he's only yeah. putting that up to set up the next clip. So we'll head, go ahead and jump into the next clip. Surprise, David. Surprise, surprise. I can look up the I can't look up the verses that talk about the corruption of the gospel, but I can look up the words religion and excess. And so, all right. Well, let's see where let's see where he's going with this. Let's try to let's try to understand what he's saying here, everyone. Oh, people of the scripture, do not commit excess in your religion. Mark the word excess, David in your religion so in your religion it includes obviously your scripture and say about allah accept the truth the messiah jesus the son of mary was but a messenger of allah so obviously this is referring to the gospel that you preach david and his word which he directed to mary and a soul from him. So believe in Allah and his messenger. Do you do that, David? And do not say three. Do believe in the Trinity, David. Desist, it is better for you. Indeed, Allah is but one God. Exalted is he above having a son. So do you call him son of God, David? To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth. And sufficient is Allah as disposer of affairs. Guys, do you have any idea what kind of patience we have to actually go through these kinds of, of arguments? So notice, he starts off by agreeing with exactly what I said in my video. Um, I say there's no unequivocal statement of Allah saying that the gospel has been corrupted. He comes out and says, yes, the passages that Muslims try to apply to scriptures, uh, they actually don't say gospel. So he agreed with exactly what I said. And then he goes on to try to show that his religion contradicts ours. We know that. That's what we're trying to get to, right? We're trying to show your book, your Quran, affirms the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of our book, but our book contradicts yours completely. So, so Sam, j just just before we yeah. move on, break down the Islamic dilemma for them. Yes. What are the, what are yes. the two possibilities here? Yeah, but remember, surprise, David, I got you. Oh, yeah, but now, with that said, <clears throat> Here is the Islamic dilemma that we've been proclaiming since the late 90s. We've been doing this since 1999, answering Islam. <clears throat> this argument has been posted and perfected by David Wood and others. Here's the argument. The Quran confirms the scriptures in the hands of the Jews and Christians of Muhammad's time. Clearly, explicitly, in fact, one of the arguments, and God willing, if not in this session, tomorrow, God willing, when we refute someone else, We'll go over these passages. One of the arguments for the proof of Muhammad's prophethood is that he confirms what is with them. He confirms what the Jews and Christians possess between their hands. So his argument to the Jews and Christians was this. Look, I'm a prophet, and here's the proof. The scriptures you have, I confirm them, and I agree absolutely with everything they teach. So that's, part, that's the first part of the dilemma. The second part of the dilemma is that he contradicts. The very scriptures that he said he came to confirm, not some magical scriptures that no longer existed. He, he's speaking to his audience. You Jews, you Christians, whatever books you got, absolutely, 100% the incorruptible revelations of God that God has preserved, and I confirm them. But they say, uh, hold on, uh, Muhammad, you say you confirm our scriptures? Allahu Akbar! But wait. Jesus is the Son of God, God in the flesh, the eternal Word, who died on the cross for our sins and rose on again on the third day, all of which you contradict. So this is now the dilemma. If the Bible is true and Muhammad said it is, then Muhammad is a false prophet. But if you are arguing the Bible is corrupted and Muhammad taught the Bible is incorruptible, then Muhammad is a false prophet. Either way, you Muslims lose. The Bible can't be corrupt and Muhammad is a false prophet. But if you keep arguing the Bible's corrupt, and yet your prophet said, no, it's not corrupt. It can't be corrupted. The Quran from beginning to end says it's incorruptible and use these scriptures to judge Muhammad. 
Muhammad turns out to be a false prophet because you're saying he's wrong and you disagree with him because the Bible is corrupt. Mm -hmm. So, uh, much more simpler. So, ladies and gentlemen, notice for, for, for that entire dilemma, which would completely destruct Islam if the core claims hold up, namely that the Quran contradicts the Jewish and Christian scriptures, that's one. Two, if the Quran affirms those same scriptures, then Islam just self-destructs. There's only, again, there's only two possibilities. Either we have the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God, or we don't. If we have the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God, Islam is false because it's, because Islam contradicts our uh, our book. If we don't have the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God, Islam is false because Islam affirms the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of our book. So if we have the word of God, Islam is false. If we don't have the word of God, Islam is false. Islam self-destructs if those two things are true. Islam contradicts our book and two, Islam affirms our book. Those two things are true. So. All the Muslims that we're, that we're responding to, as you can see from Mufasal Islam, they agree. Yes, Islam contradicts it. You guys talk about Jesus being the son of God. Do you believe, do you believe Jesus is the son of God, David? Right? They know that our, that, that, that our beliefs and our book contradict Islam. So the only thing we have to show is that their book affirms our book. And so notice we're asking, guys, we can show you all kinds of passages where Allah affirms our book. Show us one where Allah condemns our book or says that our book's been corrupted. And they can't do it. <laughs> they, they can't do it, right? So yeah. they don't realize they're, gosh, they're, they're only proving our point. But let, let's, let's take an example, Sam, because yeah. he's sitting here mocking us for believing that Jesus is the divine son of God, right? Yeah. He said, that, oh, do, you, do, yeah. You say, do you say that he's the son, David? Now notice, Surprise, David. if he would think through this, he would see exactly what the problem is, right? His Quran affirms the text that calls Jesus the Son of God, right? Sam, Sam, uh, you, you, you just, you just uh, give me the yay or nay for each of these things. According to the gospel, the God the Father affirmed Jesus as the Son. Absolutely yay. According to the gospel, the Holy Spirit affirms Jesus as the Son. Absolutely yay. According to the gospel, Jesus affirms himself as the son. Absolutely, yay. According to the gospel, the angel Gabriel affirms Jesus as the son. Absolutely, yay. I mean, According yeah. to the gospel, <laughs> yeah. the prophet John the Baptist affirms Jesus as the son. Absolutely, yay. According to the gospel, Jesus' companions, his apostles, affirm him as the son. Absolutely, yay. According to the gospel... Not only Jews, but Romans affirm him as the son. Absolutely, yay. According to the gospel, not only men, but also women affirm him as the divine son. Absolutely, yay. And according to the gospel, the only people who rejected him as the son still admitted that he called himself the son of God, and they used this against him. Absolutely, yay. And one more thing. Yeah. Oh, one more thing. Not only the angels, but even demons would scream when he approached that he is the that he is the son of God. Absolutely. yay! And I can just rattle off verses for people to write down everything you said. I mean, that's up to you. I can do it. For example, when he said even his opponents, John 19, 7, right? Mm -hmm. They say that we have a law and by that law, he should die because he claimed to be the son of God. So that's the unbelieving Jews. And you find that also stated in Mark 14, 61 to 64, where the high priest adjures him uh, by, by God. Are you the Christ, the son of the blessed one? I am, and you shall see the son of man seated at the right hand of power coming with the clouds of heaven. So yes to that. Now, Mark 1, 11, the Holy Spirit comes down. Mark 1, 11, the Holy Spirit comes down. Read verses 10 to 11 for the context. Mark 1, 10 to 11, Holy Spirit comes down in bodily shape, and an audible voice from heaven says, You are my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. John the Baptist, that's John 1, 32 to 33. The disciples, Matthew 14, 33. And then you go to Matthew 16, verse 16, when Peter says, You are the Christ, the Son of the Blessed. And Jesus says in verse 17, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. And about demons, Mark 3, 11, and Mark chapter 5, verses 1 to 6, read all the way to 10. And as well, when you said the Centurion, Mark 15, 39, Matthew 27, 54. There you go. Okay, and so now... In case anyone was wondering, that's why we call him the Assyrian Encyclopedia. You guys got that? Absolutely, yay! Okay, so Sam, th think about the Islamic, think about the Islamic reasoning here, because this, guys, this may be the dumbest thing in the history of humanity. Think about this reasoning. 
in the Bible. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, angels, prophets, apostles, men, women, Jews, Gentiles, even demons, everyone acknowledges <laughs> this yeah. guy is the son or at least that he claimed to be the son. So everyone, it's complete universal testimony of everyone who's there at his time. Yeah. And, and, physical and, and spiritual, everyone says this guy is the son or that he's claiming to be the son. No one says, no, he's just claiming to be a, a mere human being, right? No one says that, right? Then many centuries go by, and and then an illiterate seventh century aspiring caravan robber who likes little girls and old ladies, didn't discriminate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He comes along and says, What? If God had a son, that would mean that he had a wife and, and was humping his wife. That doesn't make any sense to my, my seventh century Arabian mind, so it's all nonsense. And then Muslims actually say, You know what? Let's throw out the testimony of Father, Son, Holy Spirit, angels, prophets, everyone who knew Jesus. Let's throw out all of that for this guy who liked little girls and couldn't even figure out what anyone is saying because he was too dumb to figure out what we were saying. Let's, let's just believe everything he says and we throw out literally all the testimony of everyone in the first century. We'll throw all that out for this guy when this guy affirms those scriptures that say all of that mm. this guy that we're going to believe in says in in the quran surah 5 verse 47 he says it is god revealed to him that christians have to run, have to judge by the gospel and that christians have no ground to stand upon unless they stand upon the gospel and we know the gospel that christians had in the seventh century what does it say it says everything we just pointed out from the gospel and muslims will still say we're, we're still going to mindlessly believe in him and his contradictions and and in the fact that he goes against everyone including god and angels and prophets we're going to go we're going to ignore all of that and just believe him sam if that is not absolute idolatry i do not know what is uh dave hold on surprise david <laughs> But he got you with chapter four with 71. He stumped you, David. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're about to look at that, right? Or once you're done, and buddy, all this ranting, that just shows that you've been defeated by Allah and his messenger, David. Surprise. <laughs> all right. Should we go back? Should we go through a couple of these? Because well, I really want to get to the comments because we got a lot of people in yeah. the comment. We have, yeah, we have, I don't, yeah. yeah, we have you, almost, you already decimated him. So whatever you want to do. Yeah, we guess. have, we have almost 1,800 people uh, live here. Well, yeah, but it sucks because. I know if I leave out even even like one thing he said in his video, Muslims will come back. Aha! That's why you changed it and couldn't refute it. <laughs> so, like that. so we got it. So we basically got to have to go through through the entire video. But we'll uh, we'll try and uh, we'll try and go through this quickly because, ladies and gentlemen, it does not get any better from Mufassal Islam. So again, Sam, we'll uh, we'll we'll I'll just play the clips. We'll we'll add any commentary you want to, and then we'll yeah. move on. And that way we can uh, we can get to some of the uh, questions here in a few. All uh, right, and here we go. Now, David, you tell me, do you need any more explanation beyond this to understand clearly this is referring to your religion, your book, your understanding, all in one verse? David, come on, man. Really, David, that was too simple, man. David, it was too simple, man. It was too simple for me to point out that your religion contradicts my book. But I couldn't show you a single verse where my book condemns your book or says that your book's been corrupted. All my book actually does is affirm your book. And now I'm showing you that your book contradicts my book. Ha ha. I, <laughs> I've basically affirmed the entire Islamic dilemma while refusing to go <laughs> to the conclusion, which is that Islam just self-destructs. Islam has to be false. Right. But that's the, that was the surprise, David. You still don't get it. That was the surprise. But quickly about this chapter, uh, this verse. Here's what's ironic for the people <clears throat> who are listening to Christians. You see the irony in quoting chapter four, verse one seventy one. But the Muslims don't. His argument is: see, the Quran cannot be confirming the Bible because it says the Trinity is false. Now, guys, understand what he just admitted, folks. Please, this is why I want you to listen. This gentleman just admitted the Bible teaches the Trinity. This gentleman just admitted that the New Testament teaches the Trinity, specifically the gospel. But hold on, David, for the life of me, 
Haven't you been debating Christians over the years that say that the Trinity is not taught in the Gospels or in the New Testament as a whole? It is a later theological development that took centuries to come up with. But for his argument to work here, David, see, again, I'm not the logician. You are because you're mm -hmm. the philosopher logician. For his argument to work, because the assumption is Quran condemns the Trinity and in so doing contradicts the gospel. So wait, Mofessel, are you saying that what we have, the New Testament, does teach the Trinity? Because I won't be surprised if I look at your YouTube channel and find YouTube sessions where you're using the very gospel that we have to prove otherwise. So is this not an admission on his part? that our New Testament does teach the Trinity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, you, you can go on down the line. I mean, what uh, 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 Ahmed, Didot, and Zachar Naik, what do they use to try and uh, prove that Jesus didn't die on the cross? They completely massacre texts of the Bible in order to show that the Bible says that Jesus didn't die by crucifixion. Uh, what do they use to try and show that Muhammad's a prophet? Well, they go to they go to the gospel. Um, they go to the Old Testament and the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And it's, this is just amazing, the level of hypocrisy and inconsistency and double standards here. And they just can't see it, no matter how clearly yeah. you put it in front of their faces. And I want them to understand, anytime Mufasso does a video attacking the Trinity, remind them of this clip. Hold on. Are you not being a hypocrite or you're going back on your statement? Because you said one of the proofs that our New Testament's corrupt and the Quran says it's corrupt. New Testament teaches the Trinity, which the Quran denies. So now you can't backpedal and say, no, no, the New Testament doesn't teach the Trinity because that destroys your entire nine minute plus video. Surprise. Surprise, Surprise Mufasa. All right. <laughs> I'm saying that because people put, keep putting the surprise in the... Uh, in the chat. All right, we got a couple. We got a couple more clips here. Um, I say we uh, go ahead and burn through them. All right, here Mufasal continues. We're going to keep watching him affirm exactly what we say: the Quran contradicts our our religion. The Quran contradicts our book. Unfortunately for Mufasal, his book affirms our book, and his religion self destructs. He just can't see it. Surah four, verse one seventy one. I'm pretty sure it didn't cross your mind. Chapter 4, verse 71, 171, it clearly refers to, as you have seen, to you, people of the book, people of the scripture. Obviously, you are a Christian, you are, a pe you are the people of the book, and Allah is telling you not to commit excess to your religion. How do you commit excess to your religion? By corrupting your book. Because that's your religion. It is starting off by calling you, O oh, people of the scripture. Do not commit excess. Simple. How do you commit excess? By corrupting your book. Because it is referring to things which shouldn't have been there, but it is there in your religion. This is Bukhari. If I write up a chapter now, and if I add to it and try to sell it off as Bukhari, Vahadits, I'll be corrupting it. So I'll make it part of my religion. Um. So he talks about uh, Surah 4, verse 171. Yeah. Uh, I, I like how he, what he concluded there. Very interesting. He says, uh, this is Bukhari. And uh, if I add something to Bukhari, then I've, uh, then I've corrupted it. Well, if you were to add something to Bukhari and completely change its meaning and insert all kinds of doctrines that completely contradict Islam, and then take it to your God and your prophet and say, hey, is this is this good? I would expect your God and prophet to say, no, that's a corrupt version of Bukhari. <laughs> would, would expect that, right? Yeah. So Muslims want to say that the Apostle Paul and the Council of Nicaea and basically all the early centuries of Christians corrupted the text, but then we get down to their time and they believe, so notice he, he's talking about the Son of God and uh, the Trinity and he's saying, so obviously this was all added. Well, guess what? Sam, were all of those teachings in the gospel that goes back to the first century and existed from the first century down to the seventh century and then on down to the present? Absolutely. We have <clears throat> manuscript support from at least second century onwards of the individual books of the New Testament. We even have the writings of what we call the church fathers, specifically the apostolic fathers like Ignatius, the bishop of Antioch, <clears throat> Antioch Syria, writing seven letters to various churches on his way 
to voluntarily be fed to the lions as a martyr for Jesus Christ. So we have this unbroken chain of manuscript support and the church fathers. Now again, let me emphasize why that's important. Ignatius was a disciple of the apostles. We have seven of his epistles still preserved by the grace of God. Irenaeus is another witness, writing around 180 AD. And I'm going to tell you why these people are important, because Muslims love to talk about the isnad, the sanad, an unbroken chain of transmission that authenticates <clears throat> whether something is true or not. Irenaeus is the bishop of Lyons, France. In 180 AD, he too died willingly, voluntarily, as a martyr for the glory of Jesus Christ. How I wish we can live up to their love and devotion to Jesus Christ. He's writing, and he's a disciple of Polycarp, who also died as a martyr, was burned alive, folks, at the age of 86. And what makes Polycarp important? He was a disciple of the Apostle John. So you have Irenaeus, the disciple of Polycarp, the disciple of the Apostle John. And in their writings, you find them copiously citing the New Testament, the Gospels, and all of them affirm the Trinity. Jesus is the God-man died on the cross, was buried, raised physically, ascended to heaven, sits enthroned physically as king of kings, lord of lords, and will come physically. So we have this unbroken chain to the time of Muhammad, showing that's what they believe. And do we have Muhammad saying, oh, your gospel's corrupt? Absolutely not. Yeah, guys, here's the bottom line, right? Um, we, 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 a little earlier, we, we mentioned what the gospel says about Jesus being the divine son. Everyone, everyone who could possibly affirm that he's the son affirmed that he's the son in the gospel. If the Quran is referring to the gospel, the text that Christians have, which it does repeatedly, not just the Quran, you also have Muhammad in the Hadith talks about Christians having the gospel. If it wants to say... If it wants to disagree at all, we would expect at least one word. I mean, my goodness, can't can't there be one word from Allah and Muhammad saying, corrupt, careful, warning, danger. Can't there be anything like that? There's nothing. There's nothing. But that's the surprise, David. Surprise. <laughs> You're not getting it, man. That was the surprise that Allah and his messenger had in store for you, David. <laughs> Surprise. Man. Now keep in mind it, it is surprising. What what's surprising is <laughs> what's surprising is Allah can say, Gotta love the gospel. It I inspired it, I preserved it, no one can change my words, Christians still have it, Christians have to judge by it, and Christians have no ground to stand upon if they do not stand upon it. And then Muslim can say, Up, oh, Allah's clearly saying that the gospel's been corrupted. That that, yeah. that that is that is very surprising. Yeah. Surprise, Sam. <laughs> you surprised me, dude. I'm All about right. to take shahada. I'm done. <laughs> All right, let's go on to a couple more clips. So, you are adding things in your religion by putting things in your scripture which shouldn't have been there because Allah didn't reveal this to you. And also, if you want to know further, you probably you cannot correlate all these verses, David. We are not that stupid, David. Surah four, 5, verse 3. Surah 5, verse 3. That's the last, last, very last revealed verse of the Quran, according to most of the scholars. It ends up by those words that Allah has perfected, perfected his religion and has chosen Islam as the religion as you have read so it was perfected by giving the last verse so to us the understanding of religion is from what we know from the quran so if i add another chapter even another word to it i will be committing excess guys the, 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 can, 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 can you even grasp how amazing this yeah. is right yeah. Now his case is Islam is perfect. The Quran is perfect because in Surah 5 verse 3, Allah says, all right, it's perfect now. You know what's not perfect? Affirming the gospel that completely contradicts Islam. If, it, if, he really, if Allah really wanted it to be perfect, couldn't he have included one single word saying the gospel has been corrupt? Don't believe yeah. the gospel. Just <laughs> one word, just one word. But he couldn't. How is it perfect then? How is it perfect if the takeaway message of the entire book is Christians, you need to judge by that book, that book that you have, but that book 
That book tells you that Jesus is the divine son of God who died on the cross for sins and rose from the dead, which completely contradicts Islam. Yeah, yeah. You know what's ironic, though, David? Muslims would salivate if the following passage from the Quran was said in reference to the Bible. I'm going to read something for... Now, I want the Muslims to listen because there's a Muslim here getting excited. David, refute me. Chapter 2, verse 79. Refute oh, we're, me, refute we're, me. We're, oh, we're getting, we're getting to him. We're getting we're to him. Get go there, ahead, yeah. Folks, notice what David is asking for. Just one plain, explicit statement from the Quran saying, the just scriptures one, of the Jews one. and Christians corrupt or your gospel corrupt because that would really be a surprise for David. But with that said... Let me show you the language of corruption in the Quran, but it's not used of the Bible. Chapter 15 of the Quran, verses 90 to 91. I'm going to read uh, Shakir. Chapter 15, verses 90 to 91. You can read anyone, but again, Shakir. Like as we sent down on the dividers, those who made the Quran into shreds. They shredded the Quran. They tore up the Quran. They distorted the Quran. They mutilated the Quran. Muslims would salivate, David, if something similar was said about the Bible. They would not leave us alone. They would throw it in our face. Look, see, you guys shredded your Bible. You, you just mutilated your Bible, your gospel. See, the Quran says it. But for some reason, when that language is used of the Quran, silence. In fact, here, I want to ask the Christians, when's the last time you heard a Muslim bring up chapter 15, verse 90, 91, in their discussion about the preservation of the Quran in contrast to the Bible? But if it was about the Bible, they would be throwing it in our face day in, day out until the second coming. Yeah, uh, guys, uh, th this is an extremely important takeaway point. In fact, if you take away nothing uh, else from this discussion, except for the part that uh, Mufassal Islam supposedly refuted me by agreeing with exactly what I said, um, and agreeing with us completely, right? Because all that he does in the rest of the video is say that Islam contradicts our book, right? We, we, we know that. that That's why Islam self-destructs. We know all that. Uh, take away this point, because we, we were talking about double standards, hypocrisy, inconsistency, right? Muslims, like the Muslims in the chat right here, if, you, if, if, you're, if you're going to, to Surah 2, verse 79, passages like that, and you're saying, aha, this affirms, <laughs> this affirms the, uh, the corruption of the gospel, and it doesn't say one word about gospel, and if you actually look at the historical background of that verse, it has nothing to do with the text of anything being corrupted. It's about someone writing something addition to it and then uh, and then claiming that it's the word of God, not about something that that's not someone that's corrupting the Torah. But one, you can read the entire context. There's not one word about this applying to the gospel. But notice what Sam pointed out. They'll go to this verse in the context. Muhammad's responding to Jews. Nothing about there's not the Christians aren't even being addressed there. And a Muslim will look at that. A verse that isn't about the corruption of any text, and they'll say, "You see, it doesn't mention the gospel. It's not about corruption of the text, but this is the verse that proves conclusively, unambiguously, that the gospel has been corrupted." But then they go to their own Quran, which has which has verses saying that the Quran was shredded, was shredded. By the way, Sam, I like the Palmer translation that said, "Those who dismember the Quran." That's right. right. That's right here. I was reading it. Yeah. And, right and, and get the point, guys, because if a Muslim wants to say, hey, that's not talking about the, the, the corruption of the Quran, I say, I say that that's fine. But we're pointing out the hypocrisy here. If that said, if that had said gospel instead of Quran, or if it had said Torah instead of Quran, every Muslim would go to this and say, you see, corruption. This is affirming corruption. But since it says the Quran was the book that was shredded, the Quran was the book that's dismembered, it has nothing to do with the corruption of the text and can't possibly refer to the corruption of the text. Do you see this? They they could take the exact, the, the harshest language used of any book in the Quran is used of the Quran. Yeah. The most negative statement about any book accord, in the Quran is used of the Quran. It was shredded. But they won't say that has anything to do with corruption. But then they'll go to a verse which doesn't say anything about corruption and they'll say, you see, that's corruption. And it won't mention the gospel and they say, but it's the gospel anyway. What is the, again, what does this religion do to people's ability to think? It's amazing. Yeah, like I said, there has to be something deeper. You know, I mean, we're not materialists, physicalists. We do believe there is a spirit realm. Yeah. God exists. Spirit. You got to see that there's something diabolical, evil that is oppressing people from seeing the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So 
really it is spiritual, and we need just pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit will break their shackles from this demonization, because what can it be if it's not Satan trying to blind them from their only hope of salvation, Jesus Christ, the Son of God who loves Muslims and died for their salvation? Mm -hmm. Um, Derek, uh, Derek in the chat says, "What what verse affirms the, that the that the uh, Quran was shredded? That's Surah 15, verses 90 to 91. But some yeah. of the translations make it clearer than others. So Pickthal says, uh, break the Quran into parts. Uh, Yusuf Ali said, as have made the Quran into shreds. Hilali Khan says, those who have made the Quran into parts. Uh, uh, Shakir says, those who made the Quran into shreds." Uh, Arbery says, who have broken the Quran into fragments. And Palmer says, those who dismember the Quran. Dismember the yeah, Quran. So I guys, it, yeah. keep that passage handy. Uh, if you have a Yusuf Ali Quran or one of the Qurans that, that give the translation, keep that handy. And when Muslims start going to some of these passages and saying, you see, this verse that doesn't mention the gospel and says nothing about corruption is actually Allah speaking very clearly about the corruption of the gospel. You say, well, you have a much more clear verse here that says the Quran's been shredded. What's that mean? It means nothing. And hopefully that will help you uh, <laughs> yeah, expose quite. the hypocrisy. See, that's the surprise, David. Surprise. Oh, no, man. Dude, surprise, surprise. surprise. My uh, goodness, you're not getting the surprise. Oh. All right. We want to get to questions. So a couple more clips here. Oh, oh, why? Why so many clips? All right. Here we go. So for our understanding and for your understanding, you should have said that religion is something else for you before you put up that question. Because to our understanding, religion is what the scripture says it is so to you people of the book do not corrupt your religion that means do not commit excess to it and if you do you'll be corrupting it and you'll be derailing from the straight path which you have done david <laughs> that was too easy man he didn't expect that did you honestly All right, so there he says uh, that was that was too easy. <laughs> what was, yeah. what what is the entire his entire video? Yes, David's right. I can't point to a single verse of the Quran that affirms the the corruption of the text of the gospel, um, but I can show that the gospel completely contradicts Islam, even though Islam affirms the gospel. So yeah, that was too easy, David. I agree, it's too easy. It's too easy to point out this dilemma. The hard part for a Muslim is actually. Going to the conclusion, my book affirms scriptures that contradict my religion, therefore my religion self-destructs. They want, they're granting everything else, apparently. They just can't follow the conclusion. Yeah, yeah. And you know what's ironic about 4171? We've done shows on this. Uh, even we did something about Allah's two sons, a Quran and Jesus. You know what's ironic, folks, real quickly, because we want to go to the questions. Chapter 4, verse 171, affirms the Gospel of John. The very passage he cited because he focused on the part that says, stop saying three, and he took that to mean the Trinity. So let me real quickly explain how that backfired against him. Folks, go read chapter four, verse 171. He was reading a distortion of the Quran. I think he was reading Sahih International. That's what it looked like. That verse says that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of Mary, the apostle of Allah, his word, which he cast down to Mary, Mary and a spirit from him. Notice, this shouts divine, pre-human existence, that Jesus existed with God as his word, and he came forth from him as a spirit to take on flesh from his mother. How in the world is this supposed to refute what Christians believe when this just confirmed the gospel of John? And why is that ironic? It is the gospel of John and the letters of John in Revelation, which we believe the same author wrote by inspiration, that says Jesus is the word of God. Just again, for references, John chapter 1, verses 1 all the way to 14. That word that was with God became flesh, that's Jesus. 1 John chapter 1, verse 1. He's called the word of life. 1 John chapter 1, verse 1. Revelation 19, 13. He is the word of God. So Muhammad says, yeah, Jesus is God's word. Yes, he did come down from God and entered Mary. And when he came from God, he came as a spirit. In what way does that contradict? the New Testament, and ironically, he's amening the Gospel of John and the theology of John, which is the very Gospel that Adnan Rashid and Mufassal and everyone else tell us is the least reliable because it's the last of the Gospels, 
came later in time, more theologically developed, and yet that's the gospel that says Jesus is the word, and Muhammad says, I agree, he's the word. And this mm -hmm. somehow is supposed to refute us? Yeah, and uh, a little little side note, Sam, when we go back to our earliest detailed biographical source on Muhammad, and we look how the early oh. Muslims tried to defend the claim that Muhammad is mentioned in the gospel, where do they go? Yes, they go to the Gospel of John, the Paraclete <laughs> passages. So you can't trust this guy. So notice they all go to the Gospel. Zucker Knight goes to the Gospel of John. Uh, the earliest, the earliest account we have of Muslims trying to show where Muhammad is mentioned in the Bible was an appeal to the Gospel of John. The Muslim apologists Shabir Ali, uh, Zakir Naik, Ahmed Dida, they all go to the Gospel of John, and here you have Mufassal Islam. Ha ha! <laughs> You're gone. Look, That's it. look at how your book completely contradicts Islam. Surprise, David. Surprise. All right. Um, all right. Let's uh, let's let's jump through these. Uh, I, I don't think there's much more content here in these uh, last clips. But again, I just want to play it because if I don't, there's going to be a problem. Although, no, I remember. There, there, so I got two more clips. Uh, in one of them, he actually puts a verse up on the screen. He actually puts a passage up on the screen. And I don't know how he meant that. But uh, well, if, if he meant that as as an example of the Quran affirming the corruption of our scriptures, we, we, we might need to take a look at that. All right, here we go. Let's see. I don't really mind if you don't convert to Islam because that's not my job to see that you do. My job is to give you the message and the rest is up to you. Simple as that. Like Rafid Din, you know. There is no pressure, man. There's no pressure. I was an ex-Muslim. I left my religion after preaching it for 35 years. Then I came back to it because I realized after all these years that Islam is the true religion. I derailed from it for three years, but I came back to it. And I will pray for you to Allah to come back to Islam because you were born a Muslim, David. Then you derailed and became a Christian, David. This guy says David more than anyone I've ever heard of in my entire life. But, uh, <laughs> by the way, little, uh, completely unrelated note. Don't you love this, guys? David, you were born as a Muslim. Every time we hear of someone leaving Islam and becoming a Christian or becoming an atheist, what do we hear? They were never a Muslim. And then here you have a guy, David, you were born as a Muslim. So great. Now I can start now I can start describing introducing myself as ex-Muslim David Wood. And all Muslims would be happy with that, right? Because that is that is what Islam teaches, right? That we're all ex-Muslims. So according to this, by the way, little by the way, Sam, a uh, little side note. M Muslims don't believe that anyone leaves Islam when I mean, if we take the teachings of Islam seriously, no one has ever left any religion more than people have left Islam. 100%. Because we all start off age, as Muslims. That's right. Man, yeah, yeah. This age, man, what's exploding where people born Muslim turning away from Islam in droves, right? I mean, but here's what's ironic. And again, I'm not trying to cause problem for the young man, but <clears throat> there are certain Muslim scholars who believe that even if an apostate returns to Islam, because he's already slandered Muhammad, because this man has done it, and I pray, pray God will protect him. I mean that. The Lord Jesus protect him and bring him out of Islam to the feet of Christ and keep him safe. Because people don't understand. There's a book by uh, a Muslim, renowned Muslim jurist called <clears throat> Ash Shifa, and the Muslim jurist's name is Kadiyat. It was recommended by Hamza Yusuf. That book is considered a standard in the rights that Muhammad has over Muslims and your your obligation to honor him and to pray for him and to emulate him. You'll find that even those who have returned to Islam, this is not me, this is what they say, if they left Islam and they slandered Muhammad, they can come back to Islam, but they must be put to death because their blood will be form of expiation and atonement to purify them for their slander of Muhammad. So these guys are playing with fire. Yep. This guy thinks it's a joke to leave Islam, and you should have seen the videos, how he would attack Muhammad and just mock Muhammad and and insult Muhammad, and he thinks, now that he's back as a Muslim, it's okay. It's only okay because he must be living in an area where they're not devout, zealous Muslims, because no. they'll say, even though you return, 
you'll enter Jannah, but we have to put you to death because your blood will serve as purification for your slander against Muhammad. Yeah, so let's hope uh, Mufasil is in an area where he's not going to have some people who are uh, taking the commands of Islam um, all that seriously. And But really, at the, at the end of the day, gosh, why are you defending a religion that calls for your death for blasphemy? Right? Yeah. Why are you defending a religion that calls for your death for blaspheming Muhammad? Um, all right. All right, last clip, and this is just a little short one, but this one he actually uh, he actually puts a puts a passage up on the screen, and then we can I guess we can go ahead and uh, and read it. Um, all right, and then we're gonna we're gonna get to the uh, we're gonna get to questions after this. By the way, life is too short, man. See that. Um, all right, so let me uh, go back slightly here. Where was that? All right, Surah three verses seventy-seven to seventy-nine. Yeah, that's actually uh, that's actually common. I don't know why anyone would would yeah, would he use this. that. Huh? He quoted that, huh? Yeah, uh, at the end of the video, and so. Uh, uh, but yeah, I agree with him. Life is too short to be following the most obvious false prophet in history. All right, Sam, I'll, I'll go ahead and yes. read this, and uh, I'll give, I guess, the, the Muslim interpretation. Um, as for those who take a small price, so the, again, the, guys, this is Surah 3, verses 77 to 79. As for those who take a small price for the covenant of Allah and their own oaths, surely they have no portion in the hereafter, and Allah will not speak to them, nor will he look upon them on the day of resurrection, nor will he purify them, and they shall have a painful chastisement. Most surely there is a party amongst those who distort the book with their tongue, that you may consider it to be a part of the book. And they say it is from Allah, while it is not from Allah. And they tell a lie against Allah, whilst they know. And then verse 79, It is not meet for a mortal that Allah should give him the book and the wisdom and prophethood. Then he should say to men, Be my servants rather than Allah's, but rather he would say, Be worshippers of the Lord because of your teaching the book and your reading it yourselves. All right, so Sam, the, the part that uh, tons of Muslims posted this in the, uh, yes. in the comments of my video, but here you have it. Most surely there is a party amongst those who distort the book with their tongue. <laughs> and they say, yeah. you see it? Yeah. They distort the book with their tongue that you may consider it to be part of the book. And they say it is from Allah. Well, it is not from Allah. So you got people saying, ah, I'm saying something and I'm saying it's in a book. And supposedly this means uh, corruption of the text. Have any problems with that? My friend, the text itself explained how they distorted the book. Guys, did you read carefully? They distorted it with their tongues, meaning they didn't corrupt the text. They didn't falsify the text. They didn't rewrite the text. They misinterpreted the text. And that is true. No one's going to deny. The Quran is consistently condemning Jews and Christians for misinterpreting what they have and what they know to be true because they have pure, uncorrupt scriptures in their possession. Now, don't take my word for it, folks. And by the way, Lord willing, later, I will put the links to our articles and rebuttals in the comments section, and maybe David can then highlight it so that you guys can go read this for yourself. Ibn Kathir, though believing, though believing the Bible is corrupt, was honest enough to cite the following tradition. This is in the abridged English translation of Ibn Kathir, which you can find online. Guys, please pay attention, because he read chapter 3, verses 77 to 79, but conveniently he didn't read verse 81, which we'll get to by the grace of God. So let me read what Ibn Kathir said on chapter 3, verse 79. Here, Ibn Kathir, I'm sorry, chapter 3, verse 78, because he added 79. 378. Ibn Kathir writes, Mujahid al-Shabi al-Hassan Katada Rabbi bin Anas, say that five times fast, said, who distort the book with their tongues, means they alter Allah's words. Now watch who he quotes as his authority. Al-Bukhari. Hmm. Al-Bukhari reported that Ibn Abbas, wow, Bukhari, the man who collected the most authentic narrations, according to Sunni Muslim, whose collection is deemed to be second in authority only to the Quran, and when Muslims say every single narration in it is without dispute 
completely authentic. So he quotes Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas is Muhammad's first cousin, who knew Muhammad. Ibn Abbas said that this, the ayah, this verse, Ibn Abbas said, this verse means they alter and add, although none among Allah's creation can remove the words of Allah from his books, they alter and distort their apparent meanings. Let me repeat that part again. None among Allah's creation. Who's saying this? Ibn Abbas, according to al-Bukhari. Al-Bukhari says, Ibn Abbas said this. Ibn Abbas is who? Muhammad's cousin. None among Allah's creation can remove the words of Allah from his books. They alter and distort their apparent meanings. Now, notice who he goes on to cite. Wahab bin Munabba, a Jewish convert to Islam who knew the companions of Muhammad. Wahab bin Munabba said, The Torah and the Injil remain as Allah revealed them, and no letter in them was removed. Can I repeat that one more time? This is very important. The Torah and Injil remain as Allah revealed them, and no letter in them was removed. However, the people misguided others by addition and false interpretation, relying on books that they wrote themselves. So the Torah and Injil, uncorrupt, can't be corrupted, so they came up with their own books like the Talmud, because remember, he's a Jew, so that's what he's referring to. Then, he quotes this, they say this is from Allah, but it's not from Allah. As for Allah's books, they are still preserved and cannot be changed. Ibn Abi Hatim recorded this statement. So David, help me understand this. Wahab bin Munabba, who converted to Islam from being religiously a Jew, who knew the companions of Muhammad says, the Torah and the Gospel remain intact. They're still with us in our possession, incorruptible. They cannot be changed. Impossible. Allah will not allow that to happen. Yeah, the Jews came up with some of their own books, and he's referring obviously to the Talmud. But the Torah and Geo cannot be changed. They're incorruptible. They have been preserved because Allah will not allow it to happen. So my question is this, David. And Ibn Abbas says the same thing. Allah's words can't disappear. If the Torah and the Injil cannot be corrupted and they remain, where are they? What do they look like? What are their contents? Because he says they're incorruptible, can never be changed. They are with us till this day. Where mm -hmm. are those books, David? Yep. And that's the problem, ladies and gentlemen. Allah and Muhammad affirm the book that we have. And Muslims want to say, oh, no, it's affirming some book that you don't have and you've never had. And you have no access to. And he's commanding us to judge by it, but they say we don't have it. And they say, don't judge by what you have, because what you have has been corrupted. Allah says, judge by the gospel. Uh, you have no ground to stand upon unless you stand upon the gospel. We look everywhere, whether we look to Allah, Muhammad, Ibn Abbas, we find that the scripture we have is the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God. And the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God that we have completely contradicts Islam. My Muslim friends, if you do not see that as a problem, you got a problem. Um, all right, Sam. Well, we uh, guess what? That's it for Mufassal Islam. And Man, notice, did he surprise me. Yeah, I'm and, still shocked by the surprise, David. And notice, here's what's really amazing, Sam. Here's what's really amazing. Muslims sent me that video and were challenging me. Ha ha, you can't refute this. Ha ha, David, are you ready to convert now? Because he met your challenge. And all he did in the videos agree with every, he agreed with everything I would say. And but so that was it's the just, surprise. yeah, that's, that's the surprise. Surprise, uh, David, I can agree with you. I can agree that there's no verse in the Quran, which talks about the corruption of the gospel. I can agree with exactly what you said. And my followers are so dumb that they will, they will think that I refuted you, even though I agreed with every word you said, just watch, just watch how easily it happens, David. Why? Because I don't know, this religion just does something to their, to their thinking. Uh, but there are Muslims who think a bit more clearly, and those are the Muslims who are going to be bothered by this. Now, Sam, I've gotten tons of comments in the chat, but why aren't we refuting Adnan Rashid? Well, guys, because we do one thing at a time. Adnan's video, I saw it for the first time today. I didn't watch it, but I saw it pop up, so I think yeah. he posted it today. Didn't have time to watch it because I was, making, I was putting these video clips together. I did watch... Mufasil's video, but Mufasil's video was the first one that I got. So Sam, are we happy yes. to go through Adnan's video tomorrow? Most definitely, Lord Jesus willing, by the power of the Holy Spirit we will, but I do have to mention something, David, and I don't like to upset you. 
because we all know that you're the general C. Patton of Christianity, <laughs> and God made you. And, I, and, and again, people may think I'm just saying to say no, but your sociopath is actually being used by God for his glory because this condition <clears throat> helps you to focus with such single-minded determination that when you put your mind on something, even the gates of hell tremble with fear because they know you're a mighty weapon in the hands of Jesus, and I mean that. So I'm even scared to tell you this because I don't want you to go into psycho mode. And here's the problem, bro. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm being honest I, because I, I'm going to feel sorry for the guy. And I don't feel sorry for these Muslims, but you're going to make me feel sorry because, uh, guys, honest to God. All we're, we're going to do is refute him, man. What's the problem? No, Go no, ahead. no, wait, because I'm going to get there. Even James White said when pulpit and pen, he told Seth Dunn, son, you don't want to mess with David Wood. If this guy gets on your bad side, your career is over, hang yourself, and then repent when you're in purgatory. But now coming back to the issue, here's the issue. This guy did something that I really thought was classless. He just came up with a video, I think it was three days ago, and I listened to bits of it, but I got upset and I, I couldn't finish it. Cri criticizing Nabil Qureshi and his reasons for leaving Islam. So Adnan Rashid not only <clears throat> needs to be refuted on what he said about your challenge, but here's a man going after a precious brother in Christ who's now in his everlasting rest. He's with Jesus, no doubt about it. Jesus is alive. Nabil's with his Lord, more alive than you and I, pain-free, cancer-free. And this man knows that Nabil Qureshi is not alive to respond to him. So he did, I think it was over 40 minutes, showing that Nabil's arguments for Islam being violent and why he left were bogus. And he tried to be nice, but in not so many words, he tried to hint that Nabil may have been deceitful. So uh, I don't want to tell you. Well, 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 well. You mean this is recent stuff? Yeah, just a couple of days ago, man. He's made. Hold on. Yeah, Let me get this yeah. straight. Nabil died, and then a bunch of Muslims sent me messages saying, seeking Jesus, finding cancer. Oh, wow. And then the result of all of that was Islamicize me. Right? Well. Put together Islamicize me. Right? And then they all whine, ah, I can't believe you made Islamicize me and made fun of my religion after we sent you all these really, really nasty comments. Then you have uh, other people who like to uh, demand that you debate them, and then they make all kinds of rules for the debate, make you agree to them, they agree to them, and then they break all of the rules. And when I finally got sick of that happening, that's uh. when you got Muhammad's boom, boom, room. So <laughs> I, can, I can only conclude, Sam, that by now they should they should know what they're dealing with right that that yeah. i mean I, I guess they're thinking that like oh we can do whatever we want because david's just going to blast muhammad uh, all the time anyway and they don't realize yeah I'm, I'm i'm going to keep blasting blasting away at muhammad but i'm a habitual escalator i can i can escalate yeah, things at any moment i could i could dial things up i could dial things up to a 10 in a heartbeat and what you're telling me is these guys still want to keep crossing these lines they still want to keep crossing the lines <sighs> Yeah, and I knew I knew this was going to not bode well for Adnan because, dude, uh, I was disgusted, man. The, the brother's in glory. He can't defend himself. How dare you oh. make a video? So, yeah, uh, yeah. Hang on, yeah, hang on, hang happened. on. So, so yeah. what, you're, what you're telling me now is Adnan Rashid, he knows. He knows that when he crosses a line with respect to someone I like, anything, you know, something like that, you cross a line, you cross a line that I wouldn't cross, and then, and then I find out about it. He knows that my response is always to go right after his prophet, right? I mean, he knows that, right? Yeah. Okay. You got to right. know by now. Yeah. Okay, Sam. Sam. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to, yeah, I am uh, I'm declaring myself judge, jury, and executioner on this issue right oh, now. Oh. But he crossed the line. Surprise it, man. Now, keep, keep, in, I mean, keep in mind, if you, you know, this is, so apparently he posted one video, so I will have to do one video directed towards his prophet in response. Fair is fair. I don't want to, I don't want to go, I don't want to go ballistic. So I'm going to have to decide. I'm going to have to decide. I have to think I have to jump off because I actually need to think for about 30 seconds. But that's that's about what it'll take. So I'm going to think for a few seconds and then I'm going to come back with my penalty. Uh, but go ahead and remind these yeah. guys who they're dealing with on issues like this. I'm going to zone out for a second. Yeah. Hey, hey, guys, I ain't joking. And I say this all sincerity. If this guy gets on your bad side, 
you're going to have to go live in a cave somewhere and hide your face from mankind because he will utterly decimate you and disgrace you. And I thank Jesus I'm on his good side. Please, Lord, I pray I stay on his good side. Please have mercy on me that this bond is unbreakable by the party of because when this guy loses it, even Muhammad is crying in hell. Right now, Adnan, your prophet is crying in hell saying, what did you do to me, Adnan? Even the black stone can't help me in this predicament, what you did to me. And you're supposedly one of my followers. The black stone can't even do anything to save me from David's fury. How dare you, Adnan, do this to me? Yeah, he's in trouble. He's in trouble. All right. You're gone, buddy. All right. All right. No, keep in mind, it's not it's not a nun. It's always the prophet, right? It's always their prophet. That's who I go after. So, uh, guys, you have to understand, Muslims, you're, you're free to cross those lines. Your guys are free to cross those lines. It's just that when you do, there are these things called repercussions. And those repercussions are always directed towards your prophet. So, uh, <laughs> let me see if this is going to work. Hang on. Oh, boy. Oops, a nun. Hang on, Surprise, a nun. Hey, what's up? Yo, what's up, slow cab? What's up, man? I'm literally in the middle of a premiere right uh, now. Uh, well, uh, I'm making this call. I'm live right now, uh, live with Sam oh. Shamu. Can you hear me? Can yeah. you hear me good, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're on speaker, dude. You're, you're actually live. Oh, you, if you were Sam, tell him to stop being so freaking shameless. What do you need, bro? Um... <laughs> Well, it, 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 it's, it's okay if you're in the middle of a premiere because I'm actually not calling for you. Um, Are you going to talk to Justice, no, Mr. Scruffles? No, no. Uh, I was wondering if the Prophet Muhammad is available. Oh, you, you want to talk to Muhammad right now? I want to talk to Muhammad, yeah. Well, uh, I think he is literally... In the middle of something right now. Yep, yep. He is literally in the middle of something. He is with one of his sex slaves right now as we speak. Uh, look, you tell him that it's David Wood, yes, the David Wood, and that if he doesn't get off his sex slave and get on this phone right now, we are going to have a problem of boom, boom, room proportions. Well, I, I think he is getting off on one of his sex slaves right now. Oh, oh, okay. All right, right. I got you. Uh, I'll, I'll tell him. Hold on just a second. All right, we can wait. Bye, we bye can wait night. all day. Surprise at night. Assalamu alaikum. This is the Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon me. How may I terrorize you? Uh, yes, uh, Prophet Muhammad. Glad you could take some time away from your busy schedule with uh, uh, with a sex slave to answer this call. Um, I hear you've got coronavirus. Is that right? <laughs> Yes, well, uh, uh, thanks to your humble servant, Adnan Rashid, posting a video about my friend Nabil, I'd like to have you on a special Prophet Muhammad Has Coronavirus live stream this Sunday. Would that work for you? Oh, yes, David would. I would love to be on your show so I can share my miraculous medical knowledge <coughs> with, with all of your viewers once they hear my amazing insights. Uh, most definitely. Uh, does 8 o'clock p.m. Sunday work for you? Oh, no. I am sorry. I already have a very special appointment at that time with one of my vertically challenged friends whose age is still is in the single digits. <laughs> How about 9 p.m.? After all, 9 is one of my favorite numbers. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. That's perfect. Uh, so I'll talk to you then, Prophet Muhammad. Uh, I sure hope you don't have a horrible agonizing death live on my show. Oh. <laughs> yes, I agree. That, that, that would be tragic.
magic. All right. See you then. Peace. Be upon me. <laughs> there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's how oh, justice is done, right? And then the scales are going to be balanced. Uh, no one wants to talk about Nabil. I'll talk about his profit. Maybe have a horrible, bloody death. But uh, this will be <laughs> live <laughs> Sunday. Yeah. Everything is arranged. Can I just say this? Well, well, well. Hasta la vista, Adnan. <laughs> Surprise. Smoochy the stony. All right. And so, yeah, we will, uh, guys, again, um, by the way, Sam, uh, before we jump into these questions real quick, um, you know what the Quran says about blasting away at someone else when you know it's going to it's going to lead back to condemnation of your God, and your religion, right? Yep, that's chapter six, verse 108. I even have it right here. I mean, it says what you're not supposed to do. Let me read it. So people see Muslims here. I would advise you to follow the Quran six, one oh eight. Abuse not those to whom they pray apart from Allah, or they will abuse Allah in revenge without knowledge. Boy, I think Allah had David Wood in mind because he saw in advance David Wood is going to come into being, and every time one of these Mohammedans who like to kiss the black stone and still claim they're monotheists and free of idolatry, every time they take a shot at David's friends or his God, He's going to swipe back at me, and there's nothing I can do. And for some reason, for some reason, they know I'm a habitual escalator when they cross the lines, and they keep just crossing the lines. I can only assume that, I mean, we don't believe that, you know, when when these guys stand before God, you know, the, it's not going to be, it, it's not going to be for this stuff. But as far as their beliefs, as far as what they believe, they believe they have to stand before a God who says, look, if you know someone's going to blast your religion mercilessly if you cross yep. a line do not cross that line and yet 100%. they keep crossing lines there's just no there's there's no self-control anyway <laughs> all right so we're gonna have some fun on sunday but before before that we have uh right now and we have tomorrow to go through uh to go through uh some comments so Sam, uh, you can you can pull up any comments that you see from uh, Muslims in the chat. But guys, if you had questions that you wanted us to address, uh, especially you Muslims, we're happy to take those. Happy to take those right now. Yeah, the only one that was typical that was being thrown out, like it was going out of style, is Chapter Two, Verse Seventy Nine. You that, know that, that one. That's their main one, right? That's the one they yeah, always go to. Yeah, and that was the main one. It's uh, <clears throat> it's uh, it's it's really really sad. Um, yeah, that's really really I mean, sad. So. Yep. So if that ahead. comes up, that's up to you. If you want to address that, we can. Chapter 2, verse 79. Let's I mean, ask. Let's ask the Muslims here. Muslims. Yeah, please. This is your time to shine. Hit us with your best shot. Where does the Quran say that the scriptures of the Jews and Christians are corrupted? They're no longer in their pure, pristine form. Come on. Best shot. Hit me with your best shot. So, guys. That's, why, you're, you're, that's why I wore my Bruce Lee shirt, by the way. Yeah, Come guys. On, huh? uh, so, uh, so all you Muslims out there, um, you sent me the video of uh, Mufassal, and Mufassal basically agreed with me, and then just defended the entire Islamic dilemma while ignoring the conclusion. Um, so, if you think Mufassal's wrong, and you think that, um, if you think that the Quran actually affirms the corruption of the gospel, now is your time to show us. Now is the time to show us. You know what I think happened after that Adnan Rashid uh, issue came up? We were close to 2,000, many Muslims, and I see that I think many of them left. They When they saw you go into your uh, meditative... <laughs> they, they need to... Yeah, they left, honestly, yeah. They, they, need, they, need, they, need, to, they need to thank the guys who uh, keep crossing lines. Look, I'm laid back, right? I mean, yeah, I'm going to criticize your prophet. He's responsible for some of the, the worst atrocities in the history of humanity. Of course, I'm going to criticize him. Just don't cross any lines, and I won't escalate. Yeah, yeah <laughs> honestly. We had about, and there was a Muslim, Muhammad, Muhammad. He kept harping at Surah 279. But for some reason, once you went into meditate, meditative state to think what you're going to do, they just, like, dropped off the planet. Come on, this is your time. We opened it up for you guys. Yeah, um, it, it, I mean, it is amazing, right? Like, it seems like once we are, when we're talking about one thing, then they want to post all of these objections. Aha, you can't refute this. But then as soon as we say, okay, now's your chance. Now we're ready. Now we're ready to take your questions and objections. Then we don't get them. Yeah, none whatsoever. All right. Um, yeah, nothing. So no one's coming up to the I place. mean, there, there, there are still Muslims here. I'm looking at the comments. It's, Allah is the greatest. You guys are angry because Islam is the truth. So we're getting comments like that, but just not 
Um, the more one said, there, oh, chapter Muslim... five, verse forty-eight. I was using that. No, that's a Christian using that. I thought I was being misused. Five forty-eight. But yeah, I'm Muslims. Were, this is your time. If you have nothing to say, then that's it. You know that there's nothing in the Quran that substantiates your assertion that our Bible is unreliable. You know, so nothing. <clears throat> Um. Yeah, uh, we, you know, I, I could I could go through some super chats because there were a lot of super chats sure, that, that really. we missed along the way. All right, yeah, um, do what you got to do. Because I mean, I know that I know what their objections will be. I know, and you know. Yeah, we know. We, we that, that, but that's, we're giving you the chance. That was the uh, that was the point. Um, wait, hang on, hang on. Look at this. Let, let let's just check with Grace B here. Grace B, David and Sam. This is not what the Lord commanded us to do or say. We are supposed to love our neighbors as yourselves. You both are bad witnesses for Jesus Christ. Grace, um, I don't know how to break this to you, but uh, when we blast Muhammad, I believe that is one of the most loving things we can do for Muslims, right? When we just completely wreak havoc, when we completely wreak havoc on Muhammad, I believe that is one of the most loving things we could do. If you think blasting someone uh, is unloving, you got some problems here. Because I believe that Jesus actually loved the scribes and Amen. the Pharisees. And yet he Amen. called them whitewashed tombs, uh, brood of vipers. He called So he called them snakes. He called them fools. You would look at that and say, shame on you, Jesus. You're being a bad witness for Jesus because you're, you're blasting them like this. That's not loving. No, I believe Jesus was telling them exactly what they needed to hear at that time. Yeah. Right? Amen. And you look at 1.6 billion people in the world following the most obvious false prophet in history, which leads to endless uh, death and bloodshed and molestation of little girls and so on. The, the most, I believe, uh, uh, apart, apart from simultaneously preaching the gospel to them, the most loving thing we can do is blast their prophet to shreds. And put Hallelujah. out and put our lives on the line while doing it because they say they're going to kill us for this. And so here we are, putting our lives on the line, spending here, sitting here hour after hour, trying to show Muslims that their religion is false. Your conclusion: bad witnesses for Jesus Christ because you're being really harsh. You know the way Jesus was, the way Paul was, the way Peter was, the way these guys were when they were facing and dealing with people uh, who were oppressors like Muhammad, who were false prophets like Muhammad. What do you think, Sam? Hey, you know, it's interesting. I had someone criticize me when I appealed to, let's say, the example of Paul. He said, well, when you can tell me that you're filled with the Spirit as Paul is, then you can appeal to him. I said, so wait, let me get this right. So if I was more filled with the Spirit, then I have the right to rebuke and chasten someone? So you're saying someone Spirit-filled should rebuke and chasten? and yeah. insult and rebuke. So I go, thank you. So that means now I need to be walking more in the spirit. So then I can mm -hmm. condemn a, a fool according to his folly. So, yep. yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, and, and interestingly, David, we have a Muslim here. Mm -hmm. The topic is, guys, notice what the topic is. Mm -hmm. The topic is, can you show us an unequivocal statement from the Quran that the Bible is corrupt? This gentleman named Abdurrahman says, Sam, can you answer what Jesus said in Matthew 4.10, that you should worship the Lord your God alone? Mm -hmm. I mean, can you tell me what relevance that has with with the or, topic? Or, or, or even, or even worse, you have, uh, you have. Again, I'm, I'm pointing this out because there are Muslims here. <laughs> there are there are Muslims here, and we're inviting them to give their verses showing that the gospel has been corrupted. But you've got Muslim, Muslim here. Sam Shimon, your God begot a child outside marriage, calls him a bastard, and human sacrificed it as oh, itself. Hey, Isn't hey. your pagan child murdering death cult worse than abortion? How can a bastard be God? And this comes from the Muslim. And by the way, guys, th these are the people that say they love Jesus. Now, praise God for this comment, David, because no. this now confirms what you just said to Grace B. Guys, notice the hatred, the venom they have for the true Jesus. Guys, I want you to see mm -hmm. what he just said. He says that Jesus is his prophet, he honors him, and he loves him, and he's one of the greatest messengers of all time. Notice the blasphemy, uh -huh. the, the <clears throat> insult to Jesus, calling him, God, forgive me for repeating it, a bastard. So this tells you the Muslims don't love the real Jesus. They yeah. don't love your Jesus. They love this satanic counterfeit called Isa. So you see the insult, and here's what's ironic. 
He believes in the virgin birth. Guys, I'm going to yep. turn it against them. He yep. believes in the virgin birth. Yep. That means, according to him, yep. his God must be a bastard who sires bastards because it's his God who gave Mary a child by sending his spirit in and again. Let's call for what it is. Chapter 66, verse 12 of the Quran. 66, verse 12. Those of you who know the Arabic will confirm. It says, Maryam bint Imran. Mary, the daughter of uh, of Imran, who guarded her farj, ahsanat farjaha, mm -hmm. who guarded her private part. I'm giving you the G-rated mm -hmm. uh, definition. Yeah, when and you then, uh, uh, when, when when you t when you t when you uh, put that into I put that into Google Translate once. I, I wanted to see how I was going to translate it, and it translated as the curse word version of that. You see, and I can't repeat it mm -hmm. because again, it's a mature audience, and I even yeah. have my two angels listening, who guarded her private part, and then your nasty God. Gets graphic says we breathe into that part. We breathe into that private area of hers. Why does Allah need to speak of the virginal conception of Jesus in such disgusting graphic gutter language? So either you have Allah, Allah <clears throat> siring Jesus from Mary, or Allah allowing Mary to have a son without a father. So your Allah is in the business of creating bastards, according yeah. to your logic. Yeah, guys, do you see that? We're hoping you see that. He's he's mocking Christianity for believing that Jesus was born of a virgin and therefore born outside of the the the, the uh, mother father relationship. When that's exactly what Islam teaches, and therefore Muslims claim, oh, we respect Jesus, we love Jesus, we honor Jesus, we honor Jesus more than you Christians. And look what he's saying. Even about the the, the same argument right here would apply to the Islamic Jesus. And so, my goodness. Uh, and then add, so. add to this, Dave, this is where you come in. Mm -hmm. Is it not true, David, that according to the Hadiths, Allah is going to perform human sacrifice by throwing Jews and Christians in hell as a sacrifice to atone for filthy jihadis and women raping yeah. and prostituting yeah so, so yeah the, the yeah so uh you know for for a while it sounded like muhammad was saying that you know allah can just sweep your sins under the rug but a lot of people came to muhammad and said muhammad you don't you don't know how much i've sinned in my life i mean what's allah going to do with this i mean i've got sins as heavy as a mountain here and so that's when muhammad started getting his revelations that uh if you have sins as heavy as a mountain don't worry about it because allah will take the sins off you and put them on the jews and christians and then the jews and christians will be punished in hell for your sins and so yeah substitutionary yep, substitutionary atonement at its uh, at its worst there so if i go with his logic his religion teaches that allah created a bastard in the world and his religion is a pagan child murdering death cult worse than abortion so he just condemned muhammad to the pit of hell where he belongs good job muslim muslim Good job. All right. And now, uh, I guess you can respond to this. I want to get to some of the Muslim comments because, uh, I mean, keep in mind the, the, I mean, here you have, you know, Muslim, Muslim and so on. And, but we hold these guys to a lower standard than we hold the apologists that we've known for years, right? When, when yes. the apologists that we've known for years cross a line, they know us, they know, they, they know, they know who they're dealing with. And so you just, you, you know, you don't let that stuff slide. The Muslims in the chat, happy to take some uh, questions and this is a little off topic. Sure. But, uh, ahead, uh, Abdul Rahman said, Revelation 22, 9. But he said, no, don't worship me. I am a servant of God, just like you and your brothers, the prophets, as well as all who obey what is written in this book. Worship only God. I think he thinks this is Jesus yeah. here. Yeah, what he because he's the one who quoted also Matthew 4, 10. He's saying, according to the scriptures. Guys, watch how this is going to backfire against him. <laughs> he just said, guys, pay attention. Abdul Rahman, we're answering your question because Muslims don't want to stick on top. And we don't mind. I love when you ask questions about the Bible because I want you to hear the truth and get saved. We really want you to come to know Jesus and get saved because he's your only hope of salvation. Now, guys, notice the two passages he quotes. Revelation chapter 22, verse 9, and he quoted Matthew 4, verse 10. Abdul Rahman, I hope you're listening because I'm answering your question. Jesus said in Matthew 4.10, worship God alone. The angel says to John, worship God alone. Now, he just ends up proving the Trinity. Why? Because we know Jesus isn't the Father and he's not the Spirit. But now I'm going to show him from the very books he quoted that the Father is worship, the Son is worship, and by implication the Spirit. But I'm going to focus on Jesus. Now, Dave, he quoted Revelation 22.9, right? That's what he quoted, yep. right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, Revelation 5, verses 8 to 14. 
Revelation 5, verses 8 to 14. But for the sake of time, for brevity, I'll start at 11. Abdul Rahman, this is the same book of Revelation that you quoted. Revelation. Okay, Revelation 5, verses 11 to 14. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice, they were saying, what were they saying? Worthy is the Lamb, that's Jesus, who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Oh, but it's not finished yet. Mm -hmm. You quote Revelation. You're stuck with it, my friend. Revelation 5, 13 to 14. Then I heard every creature, John exhausts the language, every creature in heaven, on earth, under the earth, on the sea, and all that is in them saying, literally every creature in the entire creation saying what? To, who, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said amen, and the elders fell down and worshipped. Note of the Rahman, the very book of Revelation that said, you are to worship God alone. Every creature in the entire creation gives Jesus the Lamb the exact same worship they give the Father and not a word of rebuke from the Father or Jesus Christ. You just proved Jesus is God equal to the Father. And beyond that, beyond that, the book of Revelation is the one, one book you don't want to quote because according to your Quran, Abdurrahman, pay attention, Abdurrahman, chapter 57, verse 3, 57, verse 3, it says, one of the names of your God, Allah, is that he's the first and the last. He's al awwal wal akhir. He is the first and last. The book of Revelation, Abdurrahman, Revelation 1, 17 to 18, 17 to 18. It says, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. He placed his right hand upon me and said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. According to the Quran, that must be Allah Almighty. I am the first and the last. Behold, I am the living one. I was dead. I was dead and I live forevermore. So in the very book of Revelation, not only is Jesus separated from every creature, not only is Jesus worshipped by every creature in the same way the Father is, but Jesus claims one of the names that your Quran says belongs to God alone. Jesus is the first and the last who lives, died, and lives forevermore. And then finally, Matthew 14, 33. You quoted Matthew, right? Matthew 14, 33. When Jesus entered the boat, all the disciples in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God, and not one rebuke from Jesus. Thank you for proving Jesus is God the Son, equal to the Father, from the very books you thought prove Islam, but refute it and expose it. Um, uh, yes, yeah, Sam, uh, there, there's an additional comment by uh, Abdul Rahman. He said, I understand what you are saying. The Quran says we should judge by the scriptures. Well, notice it specifically refers to the Torah and the gospel, right? Surah 5, verse 43, and Surah 5, verse 47, yes. judge by the Torah and judge by the gospel, right? So not just random yes. scriptures, judge by the Torah and judge by the gospel. Now, he says, the Quran says we should judge by the scriptures, but the scriptures say to worship, I think he meant God alone, but it just says worship alone. But the scriptures say to worship God alone. Who follows most of your Bible, you or us? So he's saying our Bible we says worship God alone. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Just just, uh, just 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 recap that recap that a little. So so Sam, j just correct me if I'm wrong. But was Jesus yes. worshipped shortly after his birth, multiple times yes. during his ministry? Yes. After his resurrection, but before his Absolutely. ascension, and yes. after his ascension, without Jesus ever saying, "Guys, what are you doing worshiping me?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me give the references again. When he was right, when he was. Around two years old. Go to Matthew chapter 2, read 2, verse 2, verse 8, and verse 11. Matthew 2, verse 2, verse 8, verse 11. Specifically, verse 11. The wise men found the child and his mother in the home, and they worshipped him. And even the gifts they gave him signify that he's God in the flesh. Throughout his ministry, I gave you one. Matthew 14, 33, where the disciples worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Other places, you can go to John 9, 35 to 38. John 9, 35 to 38, folks. There it says the blind man, when Jesus said to him, do you believe in the Son of Man? He goes, who is he, Lord, that I might believe? He goes, he who is talking to you, it is him. 
He goes, I believe, Lord, and worshipped him without a word of rebuke from Jesus. Now, what about after his resurrection? Matthew 28, verse 9. Matthew 28, 17. Matthew 28, verse 9. Matthew 28, 17. A group of women clasped his feet and worshipped him. And then when the disciples saw him alive, risen, glorified, they worshipped him. And the greatest display of worship, John 20, 28, a week after his resurrection. John 20, 28, when Thomas saw the resurrected Lord of glory in his glorified physical body, he answered and said to him, my Lord and my God, and Jesus says in 29, Thomas, you have seen and believe? He didn't say, Thomas, shut up. What's wrong with you? What's your God alone? Mm -hmm. Blessed are those who do not see and believe. Mm -hmm. You got it. Now, uh, uh, Sam, uh, because I still have the verse, the passage here up on the screen. So let's recap here. So what happened in Revelation 22 when John tried to worship an angel? <clears throat> the angel rebuked him saying, do not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, hold to the testimony of Christ. Worship God. Rebuke them. What What happened when uh, when people tried to worship the Apostle Paul because of the miracles he was performing? He ran out and rent his clothes. That's Acts 14. You can read verses 8 to 18, specifically 14 and 15. Rent his clothes. He goes, men, we're, we're just men of like nature. Don't do this. Uh -huh. So to, to someone who is uh, is focused on preserving the true worship of God alone, that's a pretty natural reaction. If, if someone starts worshiping you, hey, stop worshiping me. If someone started worshiping you or worshiping me, that would be our first, whoa, stop that. What in the world are you doing? Exactly. And yet Jesus was worshiped over and over and over again and never bothers to say, guys, what are you doing? You know, I'm just a human prophet of Islam, never crosses his mind. And so... Abdul Rahman, you just need to put this stuff together. You understand, wait a minute, we're only supposed to worship God. Then get to and then get your mind around the fact that Jesus is worshiped over and over and over and over and over again. The same way that the fathers worship yeah. by every created thing in existence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not relative worship. And that's why Jesus says in John 5 23, Abdul Rahman, that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Mm -hmm. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Which, by the way, backfires against you because you're trying to say, we follow the Bible closer than you. No, you don't, because Jesus said, the God you worship is the Father, and Jesus is the Son of the Father, is one with him in essence, mm -hmm. all of which you reject. Allah mm -hmm. is not the Father, Jesus is not the Son, and therefore, the God that you're supposed to worship according to the Bible is not Allah of the Quran. Mm -hmm. So how are you saying you follow the book closer than we do? Mm -hmm. it doesn't work. Yep, uh, all right, uh, a couple of comments here from uh, Ahmed Al-Haki. He says, so you think if you prove the Quran, doesn't says the Bible is corrupted. Oh, let me put it up on the screen real quick. Uh, right. So you think if you prove that Quran doesn't says the Bible is corrupted, then Islam is false. And then he uh, uses uh, the abbreviation for a curse word and some laughing faces. Yeah. And then also uh, he says in a, a different comment here, he says, what makes Islam a false religion? If the Quran doesn't says the scriptures are corrupted, I want them to answer me. So he specific, ladies and gentlemen, he specifically says, I want them to answer me. Uh, notice we, we know that, uh, I know there are a bunch of super chats um, that we want to get to those questions, but we also, you know, we also do like to respond to the Muslims just, just in case they are, uh, they are sincere. Um, but um, uh, Ahmed here, no, it's not just that the Quran doesn't say the Bible is corrupted. We've said this repeatedly. Try to get your mind around this. It's that the Quran affirms the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of the Torah and the gospel. Surah 3, verses 3 to 4, affirm the inspiration of the Torah and the gospel. Uh, but now Muslims, Muslims are, are usually aware that the Quran affirms the inspiration. They just think that it also says that the that was later corrupted. Not what, the, not what the Quran says at all. Uh, instead, the Quran says, Surah 18, verse 27, Surah 6, verse 115, no one can change Allah's words. And that's in the context of reading his book. And Muslims there want to say, ah, but it only means his words in the Quran. It's not what it says. It says no one can change his words. So when you say, oh, what he really means is, yeah, anyone can change his words in any books, but not the Quran. That's not what he says, right? You're, you're, you're claiming to speak more clearly than Allah, who says that he speaks perfectly clear, right? So according to Allah, no one can change his words. Then we get to Surah 7, verse 157, where Allah refers to Jews and Christians who are reading the Torah and the gospel during the time of Muhammad and supposedly finding references to Muhammad. This means that the Torah and the gospel were still in the possession of Jews and Christians. Surah 5, verse 43, 
uh, some Jews come to Muhammad to settle dispute. And Allah's response is, what are they coming to you for when they've got the Torah? In other words, they don't need you. They've already got inspired, preserved, authoritative scripture. Yeah, these Arabs need you, but these Jews don't. These Jews already have their revelation. That's what Allah says. That's verse 43 of chapter 5. You get to uh, verse 47. That's when Christians are commanded to judge by the gospel. Now notice, and then the next verse says that Muslims judge by the Quran. So notice, notice what Allah is saying. You Jews, you judge by the Torah. You Christians, you judge by the gospel. And Muslims, we judge by the Quran, right? Notice that makes no sense. It makes no that those those commands for Christians and Jews to judge by the gospel and the Torah make no sense if our if our works have been corrupted, if our books have been corrupted. Uh, you have again Surah 5, verse 68, which says that Jews and Christians, the people of the scripture, have no ground to stand upon unless we stand upon the Torah, the gospel, and all the revelation that has come to us. So the, uh, here again, this makes no sense if we don't have the reliable scripture anymore. If Allah is commanding us to judge by our scripture, this assumes that we still have authoritative scripture from God. Yeah. If it's been corrupted, obviously we shouldn't be judging by it. We should be, we, sh we would need the Quran, but that's not what Allah says. So these are the kinds of passages you find. You find this in the, you find the same thing in the Hadith. You find the same thing in the commentaries. Uh, it's only later Muslims who start to twist this. They start to twist this because they under, they eventually understand that the, God, that the Torah and the gospel contradict Islam. So they, they later have, they eventually have to start saying corruption because they catch on. But the actual conclusion to draw is if your God affirms the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of our books. And as later Muslims realized, wait a minute, these books contradict Islam on basic fundamental doctrines. The appropriate conclusion to draw is, wait a minute, Allah didn't know what he was talking about. Muhammad didn't know what he was talking about. Allah is not the true God. Muhammad's not a true prophet. The Quran is not the word of God. This is all nonsense. But by the time Muslims were ever in a position to notice that, they weren't in a position to say he was a false prophet. They'd get their heads chopped off. So they were forced into, con into claiming uh, corruption of the scripture. Yeah, that's how we'll reconcile this when it does nothing to solve the problem because Allah never says one word about our scriptures being corrupted. And so, yeah. my friend, Ahmed, you are in a position where you, I mean, I'm assuming you live in a place where uh, you have some some level of freedom. I mean, you, you're allowed to use your computer and so on. You, our point, you're, you're sitting here laughing at this point. Dude, our, our Bible, which your God affirms, our scriptures, which your God affirms, say that your religion is false. So there are only two possibilities. Either we got the word of God or we don't. If we got the word of God, your religion's false because it contradicts our, our, our book. If we don't have the word of God, Islam is false because Islam affirms our book. So either way, your religion's false. That's our point. So the, the so you're saying, oh, is it just that the, it, the Quran doesn't say the Bible has been corrupted? No, it's that all the Quran does is affirm our scriptures. And so if Muslims want to say that Allah saying over and over again that our scriptures are the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God, there's if they want to say, oh, what he really means is that the Bible's been corrupted, then it, it seems pretty rational of us to say, could you show us where you're getting that from? Because the bottom line is they are not getting that from the Quran. They are figuring out for themselves that the Bible contradicts Islam, that the Bible contradicts the Quran. And so Muslims are saying it when they're saying the opposite of what their God said. So notice what's going on here. You have Muslims around the world who believe the Quran says something that it doesn't say. And they believe that the Quran says something that it doesn't say because it's the only way for them to avoid their entire religion self-destructing. Well, guess what? It just self-destructs. That's what happens when your God and your prophet affirm books that contradict their, their message and their teachings. So the reality here is you have people like me, people like Sam Shamoon, your leaders have been telling you complete nonsense all your life. We come along and say, Ahmed, you need to, you need to, we, we respect you more than your leaders. We respect you more than the people who fill your head with lies. We want you to know the truth so that you can know the one true God. And your response is to post, to post questions like this and, uh, post laughing, uh, laughing emojis. Ah, Bahanan. Surprise, David. Surprise, surprise. That's right. Um, yeah. All right, uh, Sam. If you want to, uh, I'll jump on a couple of super chats here. I know yeah. it's I know it's ten o'clock, but uh, gosh, yeah. Still even uh, what's his name? Uh, our bro, Volcap said he's going to go live in fifteen minutes. That was like five minutes ago. So just yeah, just keep that in mind as well. No, uh, <clears throat> no one cares because no one's going to watch him. Uh, okay, <laughs> but here's here's the thing. 
just to let you know, Abdurrahman is not paying attention. He's not? He just, no, he just spammed the same comment. Oh, you guys don't follow the Torah and the Gospel because it says worship only God. See? Yeah, all right. But anyway, hopefully it benefited those with eyes to see and ears to hear. So anyway, he just he's spamming. But yeah, but at least for the role, those who are listening, he just argued why we're Trinitarians. If only God is to be worshipped, the Father is worshipped, the Son is worshipped in the same to the same extent, to the same degree the Father is, and no rebuke. And the Holy Spirit also implicitly is worshipped, and there are passages you can look to, but that's not the focus tonight. Then by golly, the one true God, who alone is to be worshipped, is triune, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So there you go. Um, one quick, So, uh, Sam, uh, what we'll do for uh, – we'll, we'll, we'll stick around for another few minutes. I'll try and get through as many Super Chats as we can. But yes. uh, any comments you see from Muslims that yes. you want to address yes. – I'll go through the Super Chats. Um, you can look for any, uh, yeah. any comments that you want to address from the Muslims here. Did want to address uh, Hyrion here. Um, I've heard your arguments in favor of your method, but I can't see how this level of mockery is honoring to God. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if you've read the Bible, <laughs> but some yeah. of this, some of the most savage mockery I've ever seen in my entire life is found in the Bible. So if it's what do you just, do? With, what do you do with Elijah and the prophets of Baal yeah. when he or, said uh, he? You know, I mean, he was graphic because yeah. I mentioned him because he says maybe he's in, he's in the bathroom yeah. relieving himself. Uh, even 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 I mean, gosh, even worse with uh, Ezekiel when oh. he's comparing when he's comparing uh, when he's comparing the two kingdoms to to uh, women who are lusting after giant donkeys genitals. Right. I mean, yep. yeah, I mean, it's, dis yeah. it's disgusting language. Look at what God is saying. God is saying, I know this is the most disgusting thing that anyone could say. I know how offensive this is. You need to hear this anyway. That's what he's saying, because you do not understand what 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 danger you're in right now. So um, as far as no one's going to stick on topic or you won't be taken seriously, dude, I don't know how long you've been following us, but uh, Muslims can't stay away from us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Muslims and I gotta say, say and mm -hmm. I just want to say, you know, so let another man praise you. God has used your channel to lead thousands of Muslims out of the darkness of Islam into the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's just the truth. We Honest are, to God, it's not. We are, yeah. we are just get, we're just getting warmed up, baby. Um, yeah. All right, all right. So we'll go through some. We'll go through a few super chats, and we'll go through a uh, uh, we'll go through a couple more comments by Muslims. Uh, Ronnie, well, real quickly, let me just say, how stark? He just told you, God willing, tomorrow Saturday, God willing. Write it down. We're going to address Ednan Rashid's video. He already said it. Yes, yeah. people keep asking. Tomorrow, we're, Lord willing, Saturday. We're, we're gonna going do it. to. Yeah, we're going to do the exact same thing that we did with Mufassal Islam. I'm guessing. I'm guessing Adnan's response is going to be better, right? Uh, Adnan's a Adnan's a uh, debater. Okay. I didn't say it was going to be good. I said better. I would. Yeah. I would guess it's going to be better. Now, just let the cat out of the bag. His chief passage is chapter four, verse one fifty-seven: the denial of the crucifixion. <laughs> <laughs> then this is gonna okay. I, I changed my mind. It's not gonna be better if that's his go-to passage. That's his chief passage. Oh my yeah. goodness! Um, all right, uh, all right. So we'll go through a couple of uh, super chats here. Uh, Rodney Gardner, the nay, the nay two, and Big Boss, uh, Big Boss with the uh, super sticker with the uh, with the fox. Uh, Pitar says, uh, uh, Peter here. I wonder how these things, uh, how these people would react to people turning the Bible into a comic book, which people have done, would they try to use that? Um, uh, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking. Are you asking what the Muslims would do? How they would react to people turning the Bible into a comic book? Uh, yeah, I don't understand. Um, and yeah, Christian, I, 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 I say, you know what he's trying to say? Hmm. Would they react the way they do when they do something defamatory to Muhammad? Would they kill people oh. for desecrating the Bible? I think that's the implication, what he's saying, right? No, they could care less. Um, and Des Christian uh, with the super sticker. Thank you. Uh, Big Boss says, David would listen to me. Show all that love to Muslims by tearing apart Muhammad. Don't stop. It's great. Yes, we will continue yeah. uh, tearing apart Muhammad. Amen. And uh, you jihadis out there, guess what? Only way you can stop me is uh, put a blade through my head or a bullet through yep. my head. Uh, don't, don't. Matter of fact, don't come with a blade. Don't come with knives, and don't come with less than five. If uh, <laughs> if you're if, if, you, if you're wise, bring an army. Just bring an army if you want to take down the Dizzle. Other than that, I'm going to be wrecking your profit. So, figure it out. Yep. Do the math. Uh, intellectual debates and uh, JoJo Momster with the uh, with the super stickers. Marilyn Murphy says, "Shameless Shamoon and the Dizzle about to get medieval up in here." <laughs> so up in here, up in here. Uh, um, uh, Muhammad Ibn Shaitan <laughs> says uh, there is a Somali Christian TV on YouTube. Well, that's interesting. Uh, Not a verse says the death of Momo compliments of D Wood. 
Uh, I like it. Perhaps the Assyrian Encyclopedia should call upon his Assyrian Bruce Lee side and assist in some beatdown action in the Boom Boom Room. We are going to have Sam oh. Shimon in the in the Boom Boom Room uh, at yeah. some point. Um, uh, Hindu historian in the uh, with the super sticker, the Nehitu. David, go debate Zakir Naik. Z no one can debate. Z Zakir Naik only agrees to face people who have never debated before. So those of you who are waiting for him to debate someone who's actually uh, had debates before, you're going to be waiting a, a long time. Uh, Lucius and Ann777, uh, thanks for the uh, super stickers. Uh, Sophia Film says, Injil plus Torah plus Aisha's goat equals... Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, lots of... In other words, lots of problems for the, uh, for the Quran here. Uh, Surprise! Good, yeah. Not a verse says, thank you, David, and thank you to the Assyrian Encyclopedia legend. Uh, Daniel Harp says, God bless you, David and Sam. Muslims, come home to King Jesus. Amen, amen. Daniel. Amen, Sophia amen. Films, Muslims... Jesus is God and Allah is a shin. A shin. <laughs> Muhammad ibn Shaitan says Mufasir is a uh, clown suffering midlife crises. Um, Tatiana says, and just like that, D. Wood is now a Muslim surprise. Yeah, that's that's what amazes me, right, Sam? Yeah. The, it's it's they'll send me this they'll send me this video like from Mufasil. And it will be, hey, he refuted you. Now are you going to honor your agreement and uh, convert to Islam? Are you going to recite the Shahada? Are you going to are you going to back out of your agreement? When all the dude did was agree with me. Yeah, yeah. I was about to. You got me scared. I thought it was going to be devastating. You and me would have to go to the local mosque and take Shahada, bro. You really yeah. scared me, bro. Yeah, we, it was really a surprise. Yep. Yep. Lisa, look, uh, says Jesus loves us. Jesus loves us. Um, David Resendez. Uh, Basharat Nazir, uh, Sophia Films, Google user, Rory Husker. I noticed Rory, Rory Husky uh, posted a bunch. I wanted to get to what his actual comments were. Um, Jim Tan, Sophia Films, Ready Made, Rebecca Parmley, Saint Soldier J um, said, Surah Yunus, verse 94, if you misunderstand what we have revealed to you, then ask those who read the book before you, yeah, yeah. do you sure. want more? It's actually a it's if you are in doubt as to what we have revealed to you, right? Yeah, exactly. If you yeah. are in doubt, and then it says being out of those yeah, uh, the doubts. So Muhammad was full of doubts. From and this beginning is to this end. guys, uh, Surah ten verse ninety four, right here. This uh, this is an important verse. Surah ten verse ninety four. We could have, uh, yeah, we could we yeah. could we could focus a lot on that, but that's a verse where um, Allah tells Muhammad, "Hey, if you're in doubt about these revelations, because keep in mind Muhammad's first impression of his revelations was that they were demonic and so on. So uh, Allah says, if you're in doubt about our revelations, go ask the people who read the book before you. So he's talking about the people of the book, Jews and Christians. Well, notice that only makes sense. It only makes sense for Muhammad to go to Jews and Christians uh, in order to make sure that his revelations line up with ours if we still have the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God. If we, if our books are corrupt, then the only way his books would, his book would line up with ours is if his book's been, is his book, his message is corrupt too. Yeah. So over precisely. and over again, this is the problem for you Muslims who are watching. This is the problem. You, there's no way around this. All your God ever does is affirm our books, and our books completely contradict your book. So again, do the math here. Do the math, you, Sam. If I, my goodness, I mean, trying to, I'm trying to make this easy for for people. If I say, guys, you want to know I'm a prophet? You really want to know I'm a prophet? Walk over to that river, and there's going to be a sign. A big sign saying, believe in David Wood. And if you then walk down there and there's a big sign saying, don't believe David Wood, he's a liar and a false prophet, your correct conclusion should not be, oh, I guess the sign's been changed. I still believe in David Wood. The proof was supposed to be that the sign's there, right? That that yeah. The proof, <laughs> Muhammad's proof that he's a prophet is supposed to be in his confirmation from our books. But these are the books yeah. that you guys are saying are supposedly corrupted. And he's saying, haven't been corrupted. But these books call him a false prophet. How are you not figuring this out? This is not, I mean, this is like, I think a, a, a four-year-old should be able to get this and you're just not getting it. So anyway. Let me give a, let me just give a real, real quick verse on what you're saying. This one doesn't come up often in my discussions, but it needs to. Chapter 3, verse 81. Why? Because that dovetails from chapter 3, verse 78. 381. Guys, notice what the criterion again is for Jews and Christians to accept Muhammad. This is Muhammad in the Quran. 381. And when Allah took a compact with the pro the prophets, a covenant, and it says that I have given you of the book and wisdom, then there shall come to you a messenger confirming what is with you. You shall believe in him and you shall help him. Do you agree? He said, 
And do you take my load on you on that condition? They said, we do agree. Allah said, bear witness so, and I shall be with you among the witnesses. So now what this passage is saying is that this messenger has to confirm what the scriptures that Allah passed, passed on through the prophets. Okay, now Muslims, here, here's the problem. If Muhammad is to be a true prophet, he has to confirm the scriptures that the prophets were given, which they passed on. If those scriptures were no longer available, then there's no way to know that Muhammad is that prophet because the sign was he's going to confirm the prophetic scriptures. So where are those prophetic scriptures? They had to be in the hands of the Jews and Christians. If you say they're corrupt, then the Jews and Christians would take that as proof he's a false prophet because as far as they're concerned, the scriptures are not corrupt. So he can't say corrupt because then that way, okay, so then you failed the test. The test is you're going to confirm the prophetic scriptures. For you to confirm the prophetic scriptures, we still must possess them. What we have must be those scriptures. So if you say they're corrupt, then that's proof you are not that messenger. But if you say they're not corrupt, that's proof you're not that messenger. Because you contradict them. There you go. Um, Fred Sanford says, uh, when will you be on DCCI with Atun asking me? Uh, yeah, I, I assume you know Fred Sanford and you want me to mention it. But yes, I'll be with uh, I'll be on Hatun's channel tomorrow. I forget which, I think, 8 o'clock UK time, which would be, I think, 3 o'clock East Coast time. So check Hatun's channel um, if you if you need uh, her link. Just go to DCCI Ministries. Um, that's where I'll be tomorrow at, I think, 3 o'clock Eastern time. And then 8 o'clock again, Lord willing, with Sam Shamoon, where we will be going through yes. Adnan Rashid's video, which is uh, longer. And uh, I was I was thinking it would be better because I really do want to go through all the passages. I do want to go Get through ready. all the passages that Muslims Muslims use. Get ready. You're going to take Shahada. I'm telling you. I wouldn't go there for you. You Get ready. Um, uh, someone asked but for someone asked for Sam Shamoon's PayPal. Uh, I, I, there's a link in the description. So Walter uh, says, uh, "What is Sam Shimon's PayPal?" Uh, yeah. It's it's linked to on your on your channel. Yeah, my right? YouTube channel. Okay, so so I guys, there, for that, yeah. yeah, there's a link to uh, there's a link to Sam's uh, Sam's YouTube channel um, in the description box. So you could get a, you could get his uh, his PayPal there. And uh, uh, side note for you guys who are complaining about Sam, I've told you guys before. Right, saying, oh, Sam's Sam's rude. Sam blocked me. Sam this, Sam that. I told you guys the secret to dealing with Sam before. You have to think of him as someone whose brain works in one area really well and in other areas works really, really bad. Right? If you could so when it's like it's like uh, you know, if uh I, I I say this, if my son Luke hits me, my son Luke is in trouble. Well, I have uh, two special, two of my sons are special needs and they've had developmental disorders. And there's one of them who just will, will kind of like go into a, go into a fury, right? And he'll just start swinging around and stuff like that. Well, if he hits me, I don't, I don't get mad at him, right? I don't get mad at him. I know he's got issues. But anyway, it's the same thing with Sam Shamut, right? If you understand that Sam's brain does not work in the normal ways that the rest of your brains work in, then when he does something stupid or weird, you, you, you shouldn't think, oh, I can't believe and he did this. It's it's oh yeah. This is this is what this is what Sam is. This is you know his his his, his yeah. brain doesn't work normally. All right. And, if and by the way, I did get I did get a compliment by Abdul Rahman. He goes, man, you look much different than the day when I saw you debate Shabir Ali. So he complimented me, bro. Uh, he might have nice. been saying that you looked a lot. You look a lot older or something. Oh okay. All right. Um, let's see. All right, let's go through. Uh, you see any comments you want to respond to? I still got some super. No, chats nobody. Here. Nobody, okay. no Muslims bringing up anything except Abdul Rahman about, you know, you wish you've got alone. That's it. Okay. I've been looking. Uh, That's uh, it. Rory, Rory Husky here said, uh, David Wood, I sent you and Hatun a message making a disclaimer. Don't trust uh, Mufasal Islam. He was an ex-Muslim, then came to Islam so many times. Uh, D. Wood, uh, uh, did you watch my videos? Uh, as far as as far as far Mufasal, um, I mean, I'll give, I'll give people the benefit of the doubt and just think that he is going, he is going back and forth, not that he's... Uh, not that he's trying to uh, trying to deceive everyone for for some reason, uh, but the point is, I mean, he that's that's what Muslims were sending to me, saying here is the refutation, and all he did was agree with me. Uh, you asked if I watch your videos. No, anytime anyone sends me things, it's uh, it's got to go in the it's got to go in the queue because uh, I'm normally I've normally got uh, multiple days pretty well scheduled out in order to uh, get things done. Um, 
Let's see what else. Uh, Saint Soldier said the Quran was originally written in Aramaic Syriac. Shamoon can relate, and it wasn't even dotted. Talk about preservation. Yeah, uh, Will that Lunsford, is a theory, but we'll never know. But go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Will Lunsford said, "Please respond to this guy and crush his deception." Adnan Rashid, will David Wood convert to Islam? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so again, that's uh, that's what we're taking a look at tomorrow. Happy to look through uh, Adnan's video, and I still I still believe that that he's got something good in there. Chris Claus, God bless both of you and your families. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Joey said, "I'm uh, I'm I rather listen to Jesus contemporaries about him, not some pedophile bandit 600 years later." Thank you very much. Jesus is my Lord and my God, and yeah, that goes back to what we were saying earlier that we have this cloud of witnesses all confirming the same things about Jesus. And then Muhammad comes along all these centuries later, has no clue what anyone means, has no clue, has no basis for saying that he's a prophet, affirms the scriptures that say all these things, but contradicts those scriptures. And Muslims say, ah, he's clearly a prophet. Come on, guys, you, you got it. You got it. God gave you the true God, not the God of the Quran. The true God gave you an ability to reason. Don't throw it away for the sake of Muhammad. Use it. And as soon as you're using it, you can see that Muhammad is a false prophet. So come on, guys, you can do better. All right, Sam, what are you thinking? No, uh, I, I guess uh, Mufesto tried to respond. He sent something, but it's it's waste of time. It's typical that you do not understand Islam, and because we need the light of Allah to Wait, illuminate us. Mufesto tried to explain, tried to respond to us. Yeah, someone just sent it to me right now. Uh, here it goes. Uh, let me see. It says here. Here's the comment. To us, religion is scripture, dear man. Simple. If you don't understand Islam, then don't challenge Muslims. So when <laughs> Allah talks about religion being corrupted, then it is referring to his revealed, and then that's it. That's what it is. Beautiful. Um, um, so, yeah, he has no response. So, no, so he, notice. He, he, he's he's what, taking the wind out of his sail. What did he, what did he say, that, that religion is just the scripture or something like that? Yeah, let me hear okay, one more so, time. Just okay, saying, yeah. so I mean, if, if that's the case, then... He's saying that his religion is just his scripture, but his scripture affirms our scripture. That's right. You, you guys following this here? His religion affirms the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of our scripture, which contradict his religion. Yeah, like it really, it really boggles my mind because I mean, I see Sam. This seems to me as easy as understanding two plus two equals four. I mean, it's yeah. so it's so simple and easy, and yet. You can line these guys up; they can't get it. You, you could you could say it a hundred different ways. You can show them passage after passage after passage after passage after passage affirming our scriptures, and they'll say, "Up, oh, yep, that means the Bible's been corrupted." And then you can show them passage after passage after passage after passage saying that the Quran has been changed, and they'll say, "Yep, perfect preservation right down to the letter." It's so I mean, it's so yeah. it's so odd. This, like I said, I'm going to repeat it again. I said it twice earlier. It, it truly shows there's something more than just um, the physical, the material realm. There has to be something spiritual that is blinding people from seeing the clear evidence. Like you said, two plus two equals four. If I take my daughters, one is 10, the other is going to be eight, and I walk through the Islamic dilemma, they'll get it like this, mm -hmm. like this, yeah. like this, and they'll be able then to teach it to others. You know, God bless me with two smart girls, mm -hmm. and Lord bless our children for his glory. But Muslims, People with PhDs, people who are doctors, people who are, you name it, not dummies, highly mm -hmm. intelligent people, they don't get it because it has to be something spiritual. And what the Bible says, you have Satan, evil spirits working overtime to hinder people from seeing the light of the gospel. So that's where you guys pray for the Muslims because it's not about just refuting Islam. It's seeing them get saved like Nabil Qureshi. With the persistent witness of David Wood, he came to know the true Jesus, and now he's alive forevermore, and he can never die because he escaped the lies of Muhammad, the hell of Islam, and came to Jesus Christ, his only hope of salvation. So pray, refute their arguments, and keep praying. Holy Spirit, please penetrate this mind, this heart. Set them free from this demonization to see it. And you, you gotta be spiritual. Hey, hey, Sam, you know, you know what's funny? <laughs> All the people complaining that we're too mean. Guys, 
you haven't you haven't you haven't seen anything until you saw me and the Beal together, right? I am way way nicer. <laughs> I am way nicer on YouTube than I ever was with Nabil, and and there there was a reason we we're friends. So he always under we, he always understood. Hey, you know, at the end of the day, I got his best interest in mind, and I always understood that uh, he's got my best interest in mind. So it was, uh, it was you know it was total 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 free for all in the arguments. I still have emails from him. Uh, whining and complaining about how mean I am and the way I'm uh, I'm I'm blasting away at his prophet, and uh, that was uh, that was that was the year he left Islam. So, guys, my my, my view is uh, my view is unless you unless you have a really really good reason to think that you've got this superior methodology and that this other methodology which keeps working is uh, is bad, then you know I don't know might want to because I mean look look Sam. When I look at, at the people who are leaving Islam, almost all of them come out of Islam after their confidence in Muhammad and the Quran is shaken 100%. to the core. And 100%. we hear from so many Christians in the West telling us that, hey, if you blast Muhammad and the Quran, you're just going to uh, upset and offend Muslims and they're not going to listen to you anymore. Yeah, 100%. And then you, you, like you said. That's completely even, false. <laughs> even uh, Father uh, Zachariah mm -hmm. confirms it, didn't he? You had him on your yep. show just, uh, what, less than a week ago. He's the one who tells people you got to shock them and rock them. Mm -hmm. And the way you shock them and rock them is by showing how filthy their sources are so they can be embarrassed. Like, for example, let me just give you an example of something so embarrassing. The Quran is supposed to be the eternal speech of Allah, and it's supposed to be the, the standard of Arabic eloquence. Then why describe the virginal conception of the mother of our Lord in such graphic detail, saying she guarded her private part and we breathe into her private What benefit is that? I mean, with Ezekiel 23, the reason why God is speaking is to show how horrendous idolatry is and breaking the covenant because Israel's is God's spiritual bride. I get that. But when you're describing the conception of the mother of our Lord, why go into graphic? What benefit, what value does it have unless this is the byproduct of a sick, demented mind? Mm -hmm. So, um, let's uh, let me see one thing. I just want to see if uh, vocab is indeed live right now. Is he? If yeah, if he well, uh, no, I see scheduled. Is he waiting for you? Is that what it is? Because he came in saying uh, fifteen minutes. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm I don't see him live. No, I mean he was doing a premiere. He was doing a premiere. That's not. Oh, a, that's, not that's going live. all right. Okay. okay. Yeah, I get um, this. Confused. Couple more. Couple more uh, comments from the super chat. Saint Soldier J said, uh, Surah Maryam, verse thirty-three. Jesus talking. Peace be upon me. The day I was born, the day I shall die, and the day I shall be sent alive, uh, mm -hmm. resurrected. Now, um, Sam, why don't you break down the, the relevance of that yeah. verse real quick? You guys got to understand that chapter 19, it's juxt juxtaposing John and Jesus together. Maybe in a future session, God willing, if the Lord wills, we'll do a session now. John's story and Jesus' story are juxtaposed because John and Jesus are supposed to be similar in the way they were born, the way they ministered, and their final moments on earth. This is why... When you read the Quran's depiction of John's birth, right away it follows it up with the birth of Jesus. Chapter 3 of the Quran, if you start at verses, uh, verse 33 onwards, and chapter 19. Now, why am I mentioning that? Because that same phraseology is attributed to John's earthly sojourn, his ministry. Chapter 19, 33, Jesus is said to say, Peace be upon me, the day I was born, the day I will die, the day I shall be raised alive. Go to chapter 19, verse 15. Go to chapter 19, verse 15, and it says, Peace be upon him, talking about John, which the Quran calls Yahya, which is another topic for another another time. Peace be upon him the day he was born, the day he shall die, the day he shall be raised to life. Now, since we know that John died after he was born and will be raised, that means we should assume the same sequence for Jesus. Born like John, would die and then be raised. Instead, Muslims want us to believe Jesus was born, raised to heaven, will come back, die, and then be raised, destroying the parallel with John the Baptist. If John the Baptist died after he was born and will be raised, that means we should expect something similar with Jesus. Born, died, and was raised. Now, the only difference is Jesus was raised beforehand, but that's the sequence. Birth, death, resurrection. Not birth, ascension, 
return, death, and resurrection. That doesn't make sense. So this is one of the many lines of arguments that you can use from the Quran to show Jesus must have died before he was raised to life because John the Baptist died and will be raised to life. And John's birth and ministry and death are meant to parallel Jesus' birth, death, and ministry and death in some way. Mm -hmm. But that's just one of many arguments you can use to show. The Quran, if you interpret it correctly, does not deny that Jesus died before he was raised. Mm -hmm. In point of fact, it teaches the opposite. But God willing, we may do a future session on that and go with, go in depth with greater detail. Mm -hmm. um, a couple more comments. Daniel Harp says, looking forward to seeing uh, you and Hatun talk tomorrow. Yeah, I think we're, we're talking about women in Islam um, tomorrow on DCCI Ministries channel. Uh, Kabbalik Mark um, with a super sticker. Saint Soldier J uh, for, with the comment that Sam just addressed. Um, Chandra Alyu says, God bless. Paul Georgia says, pray for your enemies, bless and do not curse. True, Amen. do not curse, do not curse, uh, curse your enemies. Um, Luigi 2K says, uh, tuned in an hour ago. The program was like WWE Sergeant Slaughter versus Iron Sheik. Outstanding. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Is is Mufasil, is Mufasil Islam the, the, the Iron Sheik? Because right. I didn't think I did. I mean, Iron Sheikh would put up a much better uh, fight than I thought Mufasil did in, in his videos. Uh, Russia and, number one. And Paul, you're not number one. America, play. That was Iron Sheikh. But go yeah. ahead. And uh, Paul Georgia says, guys, I wish I could donate one billion dollars to you. Love your work. And uh, Praveen Kumar, thanks too. for thanks for exposing the truth. You guys are awesome. All right. I think I got through most of them, but uh, nope, there were a lot, and we had some. Uh, Oh, no, oh, actually, we had a matter of fact, we had a few Boom Squad members real quick. So let's see who joined the Boom Squad. And then we should probably close out in a second. We've been on, gosh, we've been on two and a half hours. Yeah, man. And people again, are getting tired because we hit about 2,000. They're getting tired now. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm guessing we'll have a good number tomorrow since so many, so many Muslims want to see us uh, respond to Adnan Rashid. And Tell we people are, we are all, we Tell are me. we are only too happy we are only too happy to respond to Adnan. Uh, but we have uh, Walter joined uh, the Boom Boom Squad Ultra. We have uh, As Toya, uh, Tristan, and Sunil and Wretched Save uh, Wretched Save by Grace joined uh, the Boom Squad today. So yeah. awesome, yeah. awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. All right, uh, any comments you want to address? Or are we closing out? No, I we I thought we covered it thoroughly. Well, just guys, pray for my two daughters. They're actually listening in. She keeps texting me. She goes, "Baba, you know, all right, enough already. It's too long. We, you need to uh, give me uh, attention." So keep praying for them. One, 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 one second, one second, one second. Um, okay. Ahmed, um, Ahmed is, is saying, "I want them to answer." So let me find out what he's asking because Ahmed, we're we're going Either to give way. you the benefit of the doubt and assume that you have good intentions here. And so we want to uh, look through your questions. Um, so Ahmed said, God said only to, to Christians and Jews to abide by their books and not to Muslims. It means that if you they do not that. believe in Islam, they must yeah. adhere to their religion, at least even if there are some mistakes. Ahmed you need to pay attention here. According to the gospel, according to the gospel, notice he doesn't say the Jews came to Muhammad to settle a dispute. And Allah's, Allah's response was not, oh, cool. It's good that they're coming to the true prophet instead of to their corrupt scriptures. Allah's response is they don't need you, Muhammad. They don't need you because they have their scriptures, right? Right. And Why so, do they come to you? Yeah. So, uh, Dude, it's not uh, it, this. This clearly, clearly, clearly isn't saying. Oh, you know, if you if you don't want to follow the true religion, then just make sure you follow your false religion. These, if if Islam is right, then Christianity is a one way path to hell, because it's founded on the lordship of Jesus Christ, which is shirk in Islam. It is the worst possible sin in Islam. So what you're telling us is, yeah. What the, what the Quran really means by telling you Christians to judge by your scriptures and to stand upon your scriptures, what the Quran really means is, yes, follow your religion if you're not going to follow Islam. Follow follow that religion. It should be saying, whatever you do, don't follow that religion because you're, yeah. you're, 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 you're destined for hell if you follow that religion. So it shouldn't be saying, yeah, it's good to follow that religion. So anyway, um, I yeah. don't know. Uh, by if, the way, oh, go ahead. 
David, he just said something, but he goes, well, everyone born and dies will be raised. That's uh, the same gentleman. Now, guys, understand what he just said. Everyone will be born and die will be raised. In other words, what's so special? Thank you for just condemning the Quran for saying something so nonsensical and silly, because according to you, when the Quran says that John and Jesus were, were blessed the day they were born, will be blessed the day they die, will be blessed, peace meaning, blessed and peace I'm using interchangeably, they'll be raised. Well, what's the big deal? Everyone will be born and die will be raised. Again, he didn't want to get it. He's not understanding that Jesus' life parallels John's life in some sense. Just like John died before he'll be raised, you can't have Jesus being raised to heaven to come down to die again or to die because that destroys the parallel. But go ahead. What are you going to do? Um, Pigeon Hatun said, uh, David, can you show me one verse where it says that the scripture was not corrupted as a whole in the Quran? So you're asking where the Quran affirms the scripture as a whole? Well, you, you, you just have these blanket statements like no one can change Allah's words, right? Yeah. So if you have sense. Allah saying that he revealed the Torah, the Psalms, the Gospel, and the Quran, and that no one can change his words, that means that the position of the Quran is that no one, none of these scriptures have, has been corrupted. And when yes. Allah then goes on, he goes on to say that Christians still have the gospel and Jews still have the Torah and that Jews need to judge by the Torah, not by the Quran. Christians need to judge by the gospel, not by the Quran. And Jews and Christians have to stand upon the Torah and the gospel. There's no, unless you have some really, really good alternative verse that says, oh, by the way, what I really meant by saying all those things was that the Torah and the gospel have been corrupted. Unless you have that, then all you have is the affirmation of our scriptures. And that's that's the point. That's the point of the challenge I posted. You have all of these clear, unambiguous affirmations of our scriptures. You have nothing condemning our scriptures. And we sit here and we invite Muslims to make video responses, to uh, to respond to us in the chat, and they can't come up with one verse saying, nope, the gospel's been corrupted. Not one verse. We have a lot of verses affirming our gospel. They can't come up with one condemning our gospel. That's the point. Uh, it's, this, yep. is, this is completely one-sided. This is completely one-sided, and it is the self-destruction of Islam. Um, all right, dude. Um, yep. All right, everyone. Yeah. We are. It's our. It's our intent to be back. God willing, yeah. Tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Our to be same back tomorrow. Back time. Same time. Eight same time. Same time, guys. Pray for my two daughters. They're listening. Pray for them. God bless them and unite us because they miss Baba and I miss them. So God bless you guys. Yeah, Christ and uh, so uh, those of you who are still here and especially you Muslims, go tell all your Muslim friends. And uh, those of you who aren't Muslims and you see Muslims talking about uh, Adnan's response, go ahead. Let everyone know. David Wood, Sam Shimon, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. Keep in mind, guys, it, you know, at the end of the day, we, we, we only want the best for people like Adnan mm -hmm. and, and Mufasa. Yes. We want them to we want them to see this. We believe we believe that God has given us all our reasoning abilities to see things like the 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 true nature of Islam and to see that Muhammad is a false prophet. So we want them to see it. And so that's why we do this. That's why we will spend hours. I mean, hours going through stuff that we think is really, really horrible. Um, horrible argumentation, but we just want what's best for these guys. So we're going to keep doing it. And uh, so pray, pray for these guys that we're responding to. Pray for the Muslims in the chat, and we'll keep we'll, we'll keep going. And keep in mind, even if you know a lot of people still have hard hearts and don't uh, don't come around, there are people who are watching who are watching this, and they're thinking, "Wow, I've never heard any of this before. My imam did not tell me any of this before. I need to look into this myself." And once they decide that they're not just going to listen to their imams and they're not just going to listen to their favorite YouTube Muslim apologist, that they're actually going to look at this from themselves for themselves. Those people are on their way out of Islam. So praise Amen. God, praise Jesus the Lord, name. and uh, and be there with the gospel for. Uh, uh, be there with the gospel for them. All right, everyone. Catch y'all tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Sam, any last words? Christ is risen, risen indeed. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, and wash us in your blood and keep us in your love. In Jesus' name.